Welcome in to game eight on the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our excellent friends over at Zappos. The folks outside the park filed, fired up for their second straight game of Banana Ball here in our home city of Savannah, Georgia. Confetti popping, Split getting some well-deserved rest, and the folks filed inside historic race and stadium year 99 for our grand old park built in 1926 and boy oh boy are we fired up to have the nanas vincent and our whole cast and crew ready to rumble for our eighth game of the tour with the nanners on a two game winning streak three and four overall against their arch rivals the party animals and now you look live into historic Grayson Stadium. The young professor letting the folks know about the rules of our young sport. We'll tell you them in just a few minutes time. For now, we pop up into the broadcast booth. Alongside Josh Talevsky, I am Biko Scala. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday evening with us in virtual Banana Land. Nanners, after entering the tour on a nine game losing streak, went up to 12 after being swept in Tampa to kick off this tour. They've won two in a row. Let's call it a streak, Josh. The momentum is swinging in the Bananas' favor. They've won three of their last four games, dating back to our series in Peoria last weekend. And boy, it felt good for them to greet Grayson Stadium with the W. Eric Jones Jr. had a big offensive night for the Bananas. Ryan Cox had two trick plays to get him tied atop of that trick play leaderboard once again. And Danny Hosley might have had just one of the coolest nights we've seen so far this tour. Starts the game in right field, has a pretty cool walk up, but comes in the ninth inning while mic'd up and is able to get the save in the ball game and close out that win for the Bananas. Now let's shine the light a little bit brighter on one of Banana Land's brightest stars, Danny Hosley. He was the showman of the night. He he had a Moana walk-up that you did not get to see. He talks about that and his mic'd up inning with Josh and I a little while ago. Here it is. I'm just hanging here with last night's showman of the night, Danny Hosley, mic'd up for the ninth inning. Everyone's wondering what let it hang means. It just comes from, you know, being relaxed. Being a baseball player, you got to be loose, got to be relaxed. And letting it hang comes from, you know, throwing that pitch as hard as you can and just letting your arm dangle. Let it hang. Let it hang at the end right there. Now, can you talk me through what being mic'd up to try and get a save in a tight game was like last night? I loved it. I mean, granted, we got the result we wanted. It might be a different story next time, but it was fun. I, I like talking through my process with the people, and uh, I hope the people enjoyed it as well. Josh, what do you got? Danny Hosley last night walking up to the plate to Moana and sailing on a table. Describe that feeling for me. Well, it felt like I was rolling on top of eight bodies, which I actually was. Our bullpen was huge in that. Uh, shout out to those guys for getting crushed in rehearsals, and uh, they bodied it. And it was a fun one, man. Got to roll up to the plate, get some hard contact, and that was it right there. Yeah, it's fun. Danny Hosley, just hanging out with the guy. Hanging with the boys. <laughs> Danny, calm, cool, and collected last night in the ninth. Calm, cool, and collected while hanging on for his life with us earlier today. Yeah, and seven showmans for Danny Hosley in 2023, tied for the tour lead, and now he gets his first here in 2024. Pretty cool. Okay, let's set our sights on tonight. DR Meadows leading it off for the Bananas, as he has in all eight games so far on the tour. He is second on the tour in hits, leading the tour with his 500 batting average. Let's take a look at some of his highlights thus far. Nobody on planet Earth is hotter than DR Meadows right now. The doctor. DR Meadows cannot be stopped. DR Meadows blasts it. Meadows fired up. And that's a great piece of hitting. Meadows stays red hot. Very happy with his start to the season. And DR Meadows essentially cartwheeling over Dodge Border to score the tying run. What can't the doctor do? Oh, no backflip! Nanners looking for their first win. That one up the middle. DR Meadows does it. DR Meadows propels the bananas to their first win. He's your hero. As amazing as Meadows has been on this young tour, he has a tough task at the dish because Sean Fluke starting tonight for the Party Animals. Let's take a look at some of the best of the best from Fluke's unbelievable young banana ball career. If you think that Sean Fluke and the Party Animals aren't trying to get some new fans, you are sorely mistaken. How we doing? His story is unbelievable. Oh, I got a pitch now. Ooh. 
Yeah, you can't hit that. Did not make the squad last year, and all of a sudden he wins the final game in Cooperstown, New York. Told you we were winning this thing, baby! He went from the exterminator to Mr. Undeniable. Oh, oh there's a big gust of wind right there. Annabelle was waiting on the other side. Sean Fluke, baby, exterminates the ice. Sean Fluke. You are incredible! The exterminator, complete game for the party animals. And Sean Fluke rips <laughs> off the shirt, and he's gonna wave it around in the air as he comes in to score. Oh, God, no. Oh, 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 oh my God, it's gone. <laughs> yes, it's not gone. <laughs> Whoa, there we go! <laughs> I got one thing to say. It's not a fluke, baby. Yeah, the boys are here. Let's go. Tough to keep a jersey on Fluke, tough to keep shirts on his family members as well. Now, we would roll a package for Noah Nisnik if this wasn't his only his third outing in Banana Ball. This will be his first start. Of course, Fluky's third year as a party animal, but Noah has been fantastic in his very young Banana Ball career. Yeah, but I mean, we've got to focus on Sean Fluke. 90 innings for the party animals last season, solidified himself as that number two guy in this rotation. 42 Ks for the exterminator, and look, the thing that he does throughout all of the entertainment he provides out on the field is still work quickly. Three minutes and 46 seconds, the average time it took him to get three outs last season in 2023. And for Nisnik, boy, he is impressed through his first two outings. Six and two-thirds innings pitch for the Bananas. Just two hits allowed, and he struck out seven batters. And this was a guy who was a five-year starter in college, now gets his first banana ball start tonight. Yeah, the numbers you see there for Niz Nasty from his senior campaign at Southeast Missouri State. Really impressive stats from this past spring. Now, let's get a look at the numbers between the party animals and the bananas last year here in Grayson Stadium because it was a black and pink massacre. Remember, every game matters just as much as the last. The animals ended with nine straight wins, but every win just as important as the ones at the end of the tour. And that's why the win last night for the Bananas had to mean so much, considering the party animals, 13 wins, only five losses in Grayson Stadium against the Bananas. And of course, the two you see there as well, due to some ties that we had, and there are no more ties in Banana Ball. What really stands out, the party animals, a 294 batting average compared to just 249 for the Bananas, and the pitching numbers. Bananas 85, sprints allowed, party animals allowed just 54, and that's why you see such a massive ERA discrepancy. 100%. And the Nanners with a big victory last night. I know it sounds obvious when I say every win counts just as much as the last, but a win tonight will be just as important as a win in game 92 on the tour in Miami on October 12th. I saw a very good comment in the chat before we toss to the rules. Fran Bouchard says, through the table, that will work this summer when the Bananas head to Buffalo. That is a fact, Fran. Okay, no time to waste. Let's give you the 11 rules of Banana Ball. We're about a minute away from first pitch. The name of the game is Banana Ball, and this is the fastest, most entertaining game in sports. Rule number one, win the inning, win the point. In Banana Ball, points are the most important. If you score the most runs in an inning, you get a point. The most points win the game. But in the last inning of Banana Ball, every run counts as a point. Rule number two, there is a two hour time limit. No new inning can start when the clock hits zero. Rule number three, no stepping out. If you step out of the batter's box, it is a strike. Rule number four, no bunting, because bunting sucks. If you bunt, you're thrown out of the game. Rule number five, Batters can steal first. On any pass ball, wild pitch, or any pitch, a batter can take off and try to get first. Rule number six, no walks allowed. Walks are boring. So in banana ball, it becomes a ball for sprint. And the batter will take off and advance to as many bases as he wants until every position player touches the ball. Rule number seven, no mound visits. Nope. Stay in the dugout or stay in your position. Let's play ball. Rule number eight, if a fan catches a foul ball, it is an out. You got that right. In banana ball, everything's in play, so you better be ready. Rule number nine, the showdown tiebreaker. If the game is tied at the end of nine innings, 
or when time expires, we don't just play extra innings in Banana Ball. It goes down to an ultimate duel, which we call the showdown. It is pitcher versus hitter with one fielder, and the hitter has to score. If both teams tie the first showdown, then it goes down to just pitcher versus hitter with no fielder. And finally, if we're still tied after two showdowns, the third showdown is pitcher versus hitter, one fielder, and bases loaded, and all the runs count as a point. Rule number 10, the banana ball challenge rule. Not only does each team have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field, but for the first time in sports history, you, the fans, have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field. Rule number 11, the golden batter rule. Now for the first time ever, a team can send up any batter to hit in any spot in the lineup. This is guaranteeing the best possible matchup, the best pitcher versus the best hitter at the end of the game when it matters most. These are the official rules of Banana Ball. It is game eight on the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour. And we are mere moments away from first pitch. With the rules out of the way, let's get down to brass tacks. Let's take a gander at the Savannah Bananas defensive alignment tonight as they try to make it three straight victories, four out of their last five. Left to right in the outfield, you have Danny Hosley, D.R. Meadows, and Brandon Crosby getting his first start of the tour in right. Third to first in the infield, Gabe Howell, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, and Eric Jones Jr. Behind the dish, it's Bill Leroy, and on the bump, it is Noah Nisnik. EJ has really impressed at first base early on in this world tour with his defense. He is still seeking that first trick play, though, of 2024. Brandon Crosby, meanwhile, six trick plays at first base so far this season. He's still looking for his first in the outfield. We'll see if he can get that tonight. And of course, it's Ryan Cox tied to top of that trick play leaderboard. 15 ties him with Dustin Baber. In the middle of this incredibly talented defensive alignment, it is Noah Nisnik, also looking for his first trick play of the year. But you cannot complain with what he has done in two relief appearances, six and two third innings, just one earned run, two hits, only one sprint, seven strikeouts, and a three point or a three minute and 39 second MPI so far. Yeah, and as we go down and look at Noah Nistic, I mean, this is a guy who set down 10 batters in a row in his appearance in Peoria game one, and something he did in his season debut in Tampa Bay was record a 16 second strikeout. And really, I think the key tonight, more than anything from Noah Nisnik, is get the top of this party animals lineup, specifically those lefties, Tanner Thomas, Jake Skull, Dalton Cornett, as we send this down to Jesse Cole. Here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. The two hour timer starts a ticking. And we are ready to rumble. Reese Hampton, Dalton Cornett, Jake Skull, due to swing it for the party animals. Same first six for the vast majority of this tour. It's been the same first five for all eight games. Cornette the switch hitter, check that. Hampton the switch hitter at the top of the order. Earned this spot as he was the best offensive weapon across last year's tour. The former Detroit Tigers and Arizona Diamondbacks minor leaguer. An offensive superhero. And yeah, good and, hack there. And Reese Hampton currently riding an early four game hit streak on this world tour and batted 453 here in Grayson Stadium last year with a 238 OPS plus over two times better than the tour average hitter in this ballpark. He's going to try and keep it going here in 2024. All he has to do is nab a hit across each of the next 21 contests and he will tie the banana ball record for a hit streak, which he set on last year's tour. 25 straight games with a hit as Nisnik tries to backdoor him there. And some samurai work from Hampton as he spoils it. Yeah, good battle by Reese Hampton here with Noah Nisnik. And pitch number six coming in is a big swing and a miss. Bill Leroy doing a little split in celebration with Vincent Chapman. And how about this? We are pleased to be joined here in the top of the first with one of the hottest men in banana ball right now, D.R. Meadows, the center fielder. How are you, my friend? I am good. What's up, fellas? Can you hear me? I've got you, D.R. Cool. Cool. We got some good connection today. 
Yes, we do. So Cornette at the dish here, Mr. Doctor. 15 for 31. He's one hit away from tying you for the tour lead in batting average at 500 even. Is this the hottest you've ever kicked off a season in your life? It sure is, and it seems like we can't get DC out. <laughs> yeah, well, it's tit for tat between the two of you. He's got one more hit for you on the tour. But a few more plate appearances as he fouls that off. 2-2 two -two count on him. Niznik, four-seam fastball, circle change-up, curveball. Just a three-pitch mix. But it's got to be a lot of fun for you behind him. I mean, you have the, be the best view in the ballpark outside of Bill Leroy at seeing his pitches come in as Howell takes this on a hop. Yeah. And will take Mid care of Cornette. But boy, oh, boy, it's like a master class in pitching watching Niznik, eh? Oh, this dude's been electric. He's one of our new guys, and uh, he's come right in and just done his job. And, I mean, he throws strikes, pounds his own early, and uh, breaks bat, as you just saw right there. Now to be Jake Skoll, the right fielder, 8 for 27 with a home run on this young tour. Big boogie from his friends in the dugout, and he comes up empty on a heater around the top of the zone. Now, DR, you were one of the best hitters on last year's tour as well, battling your counterpart in center, Reese Hampton, for that honor. How, how much fun is it between the two of you battling in trick plays and, and also offensively? I mean, it's, it's awesome. Uh, we we kind of have a little little rivalry, but, I mean, not too bad. He, <laughs> he brought out the backflip last year, and it's like, okay, I can do that too. But uh, I haven't seen him hit one this year, so uh, we'll see how it goes. How about Niz? Two Ks in a very quick one, two, three, first. 15 pitches from Noah Nisnik. He hits the shrug after the strikeout and gets out of this frame in three minutes and go, 17 boys. seconds. Great work from the left. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Let's go. DR, we'll talk to you when you're approaching the batter's box. Sounds good. Another look at the called strike three. And let's get a real quick look at the Party Animals defensive alignment. Left to right in the outfield, it's Tanner Thomas, Hampton, and then Skull. Third to first, what a sight for sore eyes. Bryson Bloomer, then Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. Taj Porter gets the start behind the plate, and Sean Fluke at the center of it all. Yeah, it's the big return from Bryson Bloomer, has been dealing with an injury after off-season surgery, and the man with 40 trick plays in 2023 is back at the hot corner tonight. But we've got a trick play race again this season. Dustin Baber, 15, is tied at the top of that leaderboard. But Chase Acup recorded the hat trick last night, is just behind those guys with 12. Zeroing in on Fluke in his 90 innings pitched from last year's tour. So far in 10 innings pitched, a 3-6 ERA, just four runs given up. He's picking up right where he left off. Yeah, and he pitched really well here in Grayson Stadium, was 1-0 in five games started. One of them was a complete game, and Sean Fluke, 15 points earned, just six points lost, and we are happy to be joined with the righty on the mound. Fluky, you ready to go tonight? Oh, how we doing, baby? Oh, so much better now that we can hear your beautiful voice in our ears. Are you prepared to have D.R. Meadows mic'd up for his first at bat oh, against you? Oh, yeah. We are very prepared, to say the least. We got some tricks up our sleeves. I am now literally inside of his head, so I'm going to do some, uh, tell him what's coming, but it's not really what's coming. Let's Mr. See. Meadows, we've got you again. How do you handle the flamethrower, Sean Fluke? <laughs> I got Fluke's number, man. Uh, I'm pretty sure my numbers are real good against his. We used to be and roommates, so we let got Let me turn this up. You got to talk with your chest. <laughs> What's your, what, what pitch do you hate? First pitch curveball right here. All right, here you go. Oh, I forgot to tell the catcher. You ain't throwing no fastball. Oh, look at that. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, short. Come on, man. First swing the bat. Curveball right down the middle. That's all you get, though. God! Woo. I don't want to pitch anymore. I just I wanted that out and that's it. Yeah. God! Right. Now he's gonna freaking run all over the place. Too. <laughs> I don't know if y'all got all that, but uh, you see it. It was pretty about much. 68 in, it went about 68 out. Oh, we got it all, DR. Oh, yeah. We'll keep you on while you're on the pads if you're cool with it. I'm waiting for that. Hey, throw a curveball in the dirt! Nah, I'm not throwing a curveball in the dirt. Gabe Howell now. Oh, that's Cam Corn. Oh, no. Come on, Reese. Where are you playing? Oh, my Dude! gosh. 
Yes, sir. Let's go. Hey, wake up. <laughs> wake up. Classic oh, nine for Beaver's Choice. DR, thanks so much, my man. Thank y'all for having me. That was fun. Yeah, we'll see you next time, doctor. <laughs> We'll have DR on the mic again real soon, I'm sure of it. Fluke, we're going to keep you on for a couple oh, innings, buddy. Yeah, you already know. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, well, thank God. Another one of your St. Pete buddies here, Dan Oberst. This is this is a tough cookie for you. Hey, here's a little stat for you guys up there. We got two Pasco Hernando guys right here. Cat pitcher catcher combo. That's a fact in Taj Porter. Oh, this might go a long way. I hate to say it. Oh, that's so bad. Good job by Taj, though. Ooh. And of course, your manager, Mike Vivasis. That's right. I can still hear Doc talking, I think, in my head. <laughs> yeah, you might. That's on our team to kill that. Guys, grab the mic from DR. He's, <laughs> oh, man, that was right he's down distracting the Fluky. Oh, no, it's good. He's like, he's not throwing that hard. <laughs> all right. Well, we all know I'm not throwing hard out here. You know, it's nothing new. Fluke, is there a best part of facing DR Meadows for you? Oh, that Come on. sneaks past Taj. These new gloves, they ain't working too good. I know, that, it, goes, right. it goes in the book as a wild pitch, although oh, geez. Taj will oh, it hit the dirt first. All Taj right. will tell you he should have had it. Yes, he should have. <laughs> oh, man, we had no runs out, oh, jeez. I forgot what the score was and everything. Yep, see you later. Whoa! Right down the middle, Dan. It's right down the middle. That was a beauty. I don't know what he's upset about. You can go watch it later, but that was right down the middle. Me neither. But I'm not going to say any more about that man because he's big and he knows how to wrestle and fight. So uh, I love you, Dan. I can say that. That's a business decision by you. <laughs> got him. Oh, shit. Oh, you, act, you got him. Oh, I thought I hit him in the face. Sorry I about you, cursing. I'm so sorry. That's okay, Fluky. Oh, Hey, you good? I thought you Dylan Porter'd him. Oh, my God. That was a, such a scary sight. Watch, I think we're gonna do it again though. Eight counts on the same page. <laughs> oh, it's bad. Come on, let's take a last out here. Hey, Taj, slow it down a little bit. You're throwing harder to me than I am into the plate. <laughs> yep, cutter. Wow, got it on the hands. Oh yeah, late movement there. A little late. Oh man, this shoulder's on fire. I think like we're in the fifth inning already. <laughs> oh. No, no, oh yeah. Because you're blowing up the radar gun tonight. Yep. Yep. Oh, that was probably a ball. Is Trackman working or what? Nope. Oh, yes, it is. It is. Uh -oh. Bite my tongue. They came in at 74. Got the top of the zone, according to Trackman. Oh, watch this outside sleeper. Ooh. Yep. Oh. See you <laughs> Fluke, your 64 mile an hour sweeper. Under the barrel speed, baby. You just doubled oh. your strikeout total oh. on the tour. Here's Drake Toll. Woo! John Fluke, are you intimidating? Oh, I could never be intimidated. Look at these guys. I'm throwing 60 miles an hour out there. They should be intimidated. What makes you so intimidating? Oh, look at this belly. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. And look how hard you are. You're having a hard time carrying me right now. That's what's intimidating. Fluke, I'm carrying you so well. You just threw 95 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's spot on. Whatever he says goes. Do you feel like being carried off the field makes your shoulder feel better? Oh, no. I'm hurting and I'm praying to get put down right now. That's Sean Fluke. I'm putting him down right now. Right now, Biko, Josh, back to you guys. Drake Toll, thank you very much. That's the hard-hitting journalism that we delivered to you here on Bananas Television. Fluke, are you staying with us? Oh, you're the man. We appreciate you. Now, I just, I threw that in as an aside as Jesse Cole and company deliver roses to folks in the stands. You literally just doubled your strikeout total on the tour. That's what I like to hear. What the, I have, two there? The Strikeout King oh, yeah, is back. Two strikeouts. Right, I knew that name was going to make it eventually. <laughs> eventually. Man. I knew it. When you joined as a Breakfast Bowl banana in 2021, <laughs> a couple Augusts ago, uh -huh. finally came to fruition. Let's go, baby. We're on a mission. All right. Fluky, what is the next strikeout celebration we can expect out there on the mound? Oh, man. Oh, uh, let's see. I like the whole belly smack. It's hilarious, but. I really don't have too many strikeout sailors on my sleeve. Just kind of whatever their walk up is, I kind of like to rip their walk up just to tell them that I, I own the meta bat, you know? Yeah, I like the mimicking. We got a 2 1 count here on Noah Fisher. Meat of the order for your animals. 4 5 6 after. Look, look at this outfield shift they have going on right now. It's unbelievable. We're playing them to pull just a tag. Oh, yeah. One. Oh, yeah, I thought it was going to stay fair off the bat. 
Two two count still. Two two, folks. Two balls and two strikes. Just two balls in the count. There it is. On fire. Dodge, oh, dodge. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you got Gabe over there walking back. That's why I was going to fire away. Wow. The hammer from Nisnik, and he has struck out three of the first four he's faced. Yeah, this guy, uh, there was no hits in the first inning, right? Correct. One, two, three. All right, so wow. he's got, he had 10 in a row last start, right? 10 in a row retired, you're right. And it was an error that broke it up. Oh, it did get broken, okay. And I, I thought he was still going. How about your guy, Tanner Tinder Thomas, coming up to the dish oh. with a snake around his neck? I, I don't want to talk about it. That is my biggest fear in life. <laughs> I, I didn't even hang out in the locker room the whole day because that snake was sitting in there the whole time. I'm like, I felt nauseous. I was like, I wasn't even near the thing. Luke, how much money would we have to offer you to go uh, out onto the mound and pitch with that snake around your uh, neck? It would have to be 500. Uh, I wouldn't do it for anything less. I'm not kidding. I'm, I will cry. I'll literally break down into tears out there. That's not. That's not too much. I think we could. I think we could scrape that together. Oh, hey, let's go, baby. Start the GoFundMe now. Tanner breaking out his bodacious booty for the first time on this tour. First time he did oh, it last it's down, year. It's down, it's down. He blasted Don't a home do it, run. Ryan. Oh. This time he loops the ball into center. I mean, Sir mix -a -Lot would love that dump truck of Tanner's. Fun fact, by the way, that that's not an anaconda. It's a python, and its name is Buttercup. Yeah. He brought up with him to the dish. Such a friendly name, but I'm still terrified. The snick a snick. That's a snick a hit in the center field. Slitherless name. So Tanner breaks up the four batter perfect game. And he goes to second. Oh, what a great read. Oh, uh, boy. Could be a wild pitch from Nisnik. This is my favorite thing right here. Look at the boys. <laughs> <laughs> holding them back in the dugout. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Blankenship. This guy could get a little rowdy there. Oh, yeah. I'm real excited to see number eight get in that box, so I'll tell you that. Cutting the miss from Acuff, count two and one. Florida man on second, Florida man at the oh dish. My. Oh, oh yes. no! Ah, that's all you get. <laughs> Come on, Niz! He's not even paying attention. Oh, here we go. I don't know if that one's going to be on oh, that's a wild Niz Nick right or Jackson Olsen there. You think that one's on Niz, Blue? Yeah, that was way up. It's on Niz. E1 for everybody scoring at home. Sorry, Niz. <laughs> That's a big second out. Oh, assuming that Ryan Cox is going to come down lay. with this in his glove. Oh, he and he grabs a trick play. Gets his tookish to the dirt. Oh, my God. Blue. Oh, I missed this. Before the ball comes down, you get another look at it here. And boy, oh, boy, does it feel great to hear the bloomer, bloomer, bloomer. Bryson Bloomer. Legend, yes, legendary two-time Coastal Plain League champion as a banana, now in his second tour as a party animal. Led all hitters with 56 runs batted in. His 66 runs scored, nearly one per game played. Walk off base hit right up the chute. What a luxury to pencil into your seven hole here. Yeah, not a bad seven hole there. And not only that, but Bloomer, the only player in banana ball history to record a multi-home run game on April 26th here in Grayson Stadium last year. Oh, yeah, two nukes. Holy. <laughs> 2 0 circle changeup. Yeah, I see him smiling before he even swung on that one. Came in at 75, according to Trackman. Oh. Same pitch, same result. Yep. That one at 76. Oh, Mizzy getting Mizzy with it. What's he got? This kid is feeling it, though. He's on top of the world right now. Deuce is wild. Same Cutting a miss. Three straight circle changes. <laughs> he has four strikeouts through two scoreless frames. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's slapping on it, an arm sleeve there for his left arm. Yeah. It, yeah. It was, yeah, it was good. Paluki, I think, as the kids say, that guy's got riz. That guy has riz, whatever that means. I don't even know that these days. Blukey, do you feel like you're still in touch with the kids? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I'm 
kid at heart, dude. I'm just a big kid here. Oh, God. The first one always hurts. <laughs> what? What? what is going on with your arm here? It's been, dude. It's been eight days since you threw. <laughs> dude, there's something in the shoulder, dude. It's a little tweak. <laughs> but you pitch through it because you're a warrior. Oh, yeah, you ain't got no choice. Deal with the pain afterwards. All right, get in there, Tosh. <laughs> dude, you I crack forget, me up, dude, man. I forget you can hear every little thing. I, I want to have like little moments to myself, like, oh my god, this is rough. You but, have yeah. you have no moments to yourself on I ETV. Love, I absolutely love it, though. Luke, I've got to know what is what's the wildest thought you've ever had just in the middle of a banana ball game oh, while pitching. Man, probably have to have ice cold beer in the stadium club after the game. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> It always helps with the recovery, huh? Oh, yeah, it's needed. Well, Fluker, oh. you're going to have Hosley, Jones Jr., and Crosby. Five, six, seven here. Your guys haven't given you any offensive support, so you've got to throw up another goose egg to keep this thing tied at points. Yeah, we're all right. No biggie. No biggie. It's just... It's just Hosley. It's just the... <laughs> Third and second best hitters according to Dude, OPS Plus on last year's with tour. Come on stats, man. I don't want to hear how good they are. And no, Danny no. Hosley batted 296 against Sean Luke last year. Oh, that's right down the middle. Swing the bat. <laughs> well, Luke was, was is that a fastball? I don't want to talk about it. That's an out. <laughs> Somebody. Holy. Tanner Thomas. Hey. He'll grab it. Hey, Guff. Reese is playing the wall. <laughs> come on. Hey, tell him to come in and center. <laughs> like, like, come on, dude. Like, I never thought I'd have to tell Reese something. That dude's, like, it's an 80 grade outfielder. You want him in yeah. with the home run leader from last oh, year's tour at the game. Oh, Just, a, just missed. Da, da, da. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, oh no. Long way to run for Jake Skull. Come on, Skull. He's yeah, got oh it. Oh, boy. <laughs> I love my outfield. And you know what, Fluke? They love you because oh, man. they love a guy who's just getting fly ball outs like this. It's a blast. That, <laughs> what, golf? that one came in at 69 miles an hour. Oh, I know. That's about. That's, Very cut, nice, according cutter, to track, man. I'm pretty sure that pitch has been shelled every time tonight. Now Brandon Crosby. Oh, I, oh, let me do something cool. Go ahead, Swan. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, good. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you guys. Hey, kid. Luke, that's a one minute and 25 ah, second inning. The 20th that's... fastest in banana ball. Let's go, baby. That's all time, Luke. All time. The 20th fastest inning all, right, all time. I'll take it. We're still on the board. Sean, have a blast the rest of the night. Thank yes, you so sir. much, man. That guy. See you later. See you, Fluky. That guy's the best in the biz. He is simply the best in the biz. It's an electric factory every time. Correct. Let's see what Maceo and the boys have cooking for us with our player dance. It's scoreless through two. about Maceo Harrison with Jake Lealios, Dalton Ponce, Garrett DeClue, and Ryan Rodriguez for the party animals, Malachi Mitchell, Noah Bridges, DJ the Invader, and Ethan Scooje for the bananas. And Ethan Scooje with bucket hat, Correct. might I add. Correct. We've got a heck of a pitcher's duel, two innings in the books, Tosh Porter on a hop. How about that? Gabe Howell bounces it between the legs. Beautiful trick play, second of his season.
A beautiful bounce pass from Gabe Howell going under the legs, and the club magicians even going over there to give Howell some knucks there. Heck of a trick play to start this third inning. Well, Gabe's as smooth as they come. There's a reason why the Atlanta Braves drafted him out of high school. I mean, he is just an insanely gifted baseball and, and now banana ball player. And we're going to see some wild stuff from him as this tour continues. How about this? Nizzy with his first ever 3-2-2. Olsen, Cox, and Meadows, his backup dancers. Well, MJ here, Leroy getting into it. Vincent dancing as per usual. And the pitch gets the inside corner. It's a pitcher's pitch right on the black. Yeah, beautiful pitch from Noah Nisnik in his very first 3-2-2. Just goes for the fastball there and is able to nail it. And now has jumped ahead of number two, Jason Swan, one and two. Niz working quickly. That one does miss, pinch up and in. Good frame by Bill. Never got the plate though. And that one flipped over the head of EJ into right. Excellent piece of hitting by Swanee, the five-year man out of Georgia Southern. That's just a heck of a two-strike swing. And I feel like it's flying under the radar right now, but Jason Swan is a ridiculously tough out for the party animals right now. He's working on three consecutive multi-hit games. He's got a chance to extend it to four now tonight. You don't need to hit it 100 miles an hour to get a base knock. In fact, Trackman proves that you can hit it 59 miles an hour off your bat and get a base knock. The two hits off Nisnik, both bloops. They look like screamers in the box score. And now to the 10 hole we go. Dustin Baber ahead of ball and no strikes. Second baseman in his second tour with the Animals. Another Florida man out of Babson Park. Check on Swanee. And there's a Florida man stuck between first and second. EJ trying to track him down. Now Olsen will grab him. Swan ended up out of the baseline anyway. That's a heck of a pickoff from Nisnik that takes a speedy man off the bags. And it's the left-handers that are lethal with those pickoff moves. You saw Nisnik with a great step-off move there. And EJ and Jackson Olsen, great job in that rundown to nail Swanee. Now Nisnik back into the windup facing Dustin Baber and is able to get a strike to even this count. Bill Leroy stole that strike. It was an inch or two inside, but looked great. I mean, you can see it on the broadcast because of how he framed it. It looked like an excellent pitch. It was an excellent pitch. Leroy just needed the assist on it. Now a one-two count on the donut hitter. If Baber goes down on strikes, full capacity crowd in Grayson will be gifted free donuts and good spoil there. Fastball is out of the zone, but he's just in protect mode right now. Yeah, and Dustin Baber swinging the bat well is bat well right now. I mean, a double last night and three runs batted in off of that double. 275 mark here in Grayson Stadium last year. <laughs> and Noah Nisnik snares that ground ball right back to him, goes under the legs. And that is the first trick play in the career of Noah Nisnik and a three minute and four second frame. Here you go with it again. Nice snag between the legs. He is on top of the banana ball world right now. Nine and two third innings in his young career. Only one earned run thus far, three scoreless this evening. And now what a special moment it is. Third baseman for the party animals, rehab his tail off after some prep season surgery. Bryson Bloomer, thank you for blessing us with your presence on the banana ball field. Thank you, Biko. Happy to be here. A lot of work. A lot of work went into this right here. Give us the spark notes. Talk us through the surgery, the recovery, how you got back so quickly, because you're ahead of schedule. Yeah, it was five months. It was originally supposed to be six. Uh, had four weeks on the crutches, no walking, 50% uh, weight on the right leg. And then after we got off that, it was just building up the quads and the hammies. Once we got the quads and the hammies built up, we moved up to the hip flexors and trying to get that labrum and the adductors built up. And that took about 12 weeks, all that right there. And then once we hit the 12-week mark, I was able to start doing sports-specific stuff. And that was about the time spring training started. So just started grinding it out. One day on, another day off, just trying to recover and build strength. 
And I'm sure our athletic trainer here, Francis Gilbert, a big reason why you were able to come back so quickly. Yeah, me and Francis uh, know each other very well now. <laughs> uh, we, we spent a lot of time together in the off season. Everybody was gone. It was just me and her. I call it the dungeon. It's our training room. <laughs> me and her battling, battling the, the elements in the dungeon. Cold, <laughs> dark dungeon. Here's Jackson Olsen. But I'm really happy to be here, man. I, uh, I never experienced anything like that in my life. I like to pride myself on being a hard worker, and that was a, it was a true test, a true test. Well, you got a big shift here on Jackson as Fluke gets him with the off speed, quickly 0-2. I mean, Fluke throws slower than anybody in banana ball, especially tonight. But can you talk to us a little bit about a young star in his banana ball career, Noah Nisnik, because you got three straight change-ups yep. from him. And Boy, yep. they were all terrific. They were great, and I uh, hadn't seen those uh, in six months or the last time I played. Yeah. So I think next time that's strike three. <laughs> I think I think the goal of my next AB is to try and, like, break my bat. So at least let the ball travel a little bit and uh, see what happens. Third K for Fluky. He is now. Oh, yeah, Fluke. He's now lost oh, yeah, the jersey. Baby. How much fun is it playing defense behind him? Well, you know when Fluke's on the bump, you're going to get some work. So this is a great rehab day for me. <laughs> Except he's been shoving. A lot more strikeouts than usual. He had two across ten innings yep. coming into tonight. He has three across two and a third. Yeah, I'm just really waiting on a ground ball. Bill Honestly. Leroy could be your guy. Yeah. He loves that six hole. Yeah, Bill, Bill's going to give me my first trick play right here. I, I need it. Quick, oh, quick 2-0 count. Bill's off to a terrific start to his tour. Four for ten, four ball, four sprints, and just one strikeout. Yeah, he's always going to put together an A-B and try and get on base. That's been Bill since I've known him. Three. Yeah, well, Roy with an early 571 on base percentage and back-to-back two-hit games as well. Straight. And how about that? Four straight bad ones from Sean Fluke. And Leroy off to the races. He will pump the brakes at hey, first base. We roll this. He now ties Garrett Delano for the tour lead in ball four sprints. Vincent Chapman says that one was a pinch high. Trackman liked it. I got you. All right, let's get a double play right here. I got a cup. I'll fluke ground ball, baby. Malachi Mitchell, the automatic runner, pinch running for Bill Leroy. And Cox knifes this one foul. No one's got a chance for it. I want to report that that felt really good running after that, so no pain. I'm ready. So would you consider yourself 100% or are you still, nah. are you still taking it easy? I'm still, uh, I, I'd say 80%, and in the you know baseball skill department on defense, I'd say I'm about 90%. Hitting, hitting's gonna be a struggle. Uh, I spent two years swinging with a torn labrum in my right hip, so I have a lot of bad habits. <laughs> That's understandable. You were an unbelievably successful hitter yeah. with a torn labrum, man. Try to get back to that. Oh. Hot Go shot on. deflected on. from Swan to Baber, and he gets the out. Malachi up to second. You don't see that every day at the ballpark. Ball is Let's go, Fluke. Yeah, that was 95 off the bat of Ryan Cox. Off, Ryan nah, Davis they're not scoring. Don't listen to the head coach, Tyler Gillum. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> That's the old 3-4-3 three, three in the book. And how about, how about this bloomer, your 2022 collegiate bananas teammate, D.R. Meadows, coming in oh, from center is. field on the bicycle. DR is a man of many talents, I will say. That guy is an absolute ball player. He can do it all. And currently lip syncing to some queen. <laughs> While balancing on the bike. A performer. He's a performer. <laughs> That's a fact. Oh, look out for the base, DR. He <laughs> jumped it. Oh, my. Wow. Well, oh, burnout, power slide into home plate there from DR. Oh, he had the bat on him. Hey, got to go quick. Get the dog out. Ah, looks good. That one did look good, Bloomer. Bloomer, what's one walk-up you've always wanted to do in your banana ball career? Ah, uh, that's a great question. 
there's always songs that I listen to. I'm like, I, I want that walk-up song, but then I can't have it, you know. Well, you are the ox man for both teams. Yes, I, I take the ox. And uh, when we have joint locker rooms on the road, I got the ox. When we're at home, I got the ox. Is that something you pride yourself on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like to... I, there's, there's a science to it. In my <laughs> mind. I like to get reactions, put two songs together, they're like, oh, I like this song. I'm like, yeah, that's what I do, baby. <laughs> Inning winning run at second base, the 2-2 two -two to oh, Maddows. Yeah. He strikes out. That boy, Fluke. Beautiful bender from Sean Fluke, his fourth K of the game. Come on. How about this pitcher's duel, Bloomer? Yeah, we got a good one. Come on, Reeser. Go, boys. How about the intensity from Sean Fluke as well, just barking at the Bananas dugout after that big strikeout yeah. and a celebration. He and Tosh Let's Border go. were cranking that soldier Let's boy. Let's go. Bryson Bloomer, thank you so much, my man. Have fun the rest of the night. Thank you, Biko. Appreciate hanging out with you. There goes the Boomer. And as we head to the fourth inning, the Banana Band blasting away in the stands. Scoreless so far tonight. Sean Fluke and Noah Nisnik with an absolute duel. How about the moves from Jesse Cole? <laughs> Flying around with our cameras. What are we zooming in on? That is one of our newest bananas. That's a rad bod. It's not a dad bod. It's a rad bod. Let's take a look at what we have on the docket tomorrow. I like his moves, too. As well as our chain-mailed banana nana. Tomorrow. It is the nine-year birthday of the Savannah Bananas, 1 p.m., the first ever banana ball game in Grayson Stadium that will be played during the day. Boy, that looked good from Nisnik. Big curveball at 76. Trekman said it was outside, so good call by Vincent Chapman. Reese breaks his bat, flies it to his counterpart, Mr. Meadows. And an excellent start, two pitches, one out for Nisnik as he kicks off his second trip through the animal's order. Now it'll be Dalton Cornett, who bounced out to Howell at third his first time. This is just an absolute treat. We had an excellent pitcher's duel in Peoria last weekend. Garrett Delano against Ethan Scooge, which will be the pitching matchup tomorrow. And Nisnik and Fluke putting on a show, as is Vincent Chapman. Another zoom. What a doozy there. Vincent Chapman just threw the mask at 72 miles an hour, according to Trackman. That's faster than probably 10 of Sean Fluke's pitches tonight. What Somebody did, give Vince a contract. What did, yeah, that's true, actually. That's probably faster than about 40% of Fluke's pitches tonight. Every curveball has been under 70 from Sean Fluke. What were the metrics, according to Trackman, on uh, Vincent's gyrations of the hips. Um, his, let's see, shakes per second. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, it was a 2,200 shakes per second. Vincent a little gassed from his dancing. I don't know where that pitch missed. It doesn't matter. Cornet, one for two on the night, 16 for 33 on the tour. Unbelievable. He's one hit away from staying right there at 500. It's just such an honor as we watch this incredible pitcher's duel to see Cornette swing the lumber. I mean, you, you can't get sick of it. The kid out of Pippa Passes, Kentucky in his third world tour. And Dalton Cornette, I mean, has extended his early eight game hitting streak now. And six of those games have been multi-hit affairs from Dalton Cornette. Two of them, three hit games. He's just hitting at another level. Beautiful heater, scrapes the outside corner. Skull disagreed with Vincent Chapman, but looked good from up here in the booth. And a quick 0-2, Jake struck out his first time. Tries to go back to the well, that one well outside. And as Leroy checks on Cornett, who has not attempted a steal so far on the tour. Was seven for 14 last year. Another heater, Nisnik caught. Skull looking on the fastball. 
Noah did not like where he left that one. Former first round draft pick, Texas Rangers grabbed Skull 15th overall in 2010. Spent seven years in minor league baseball. Can't leave too many balls over the middle of the plate to him. No, Jake Skull, just an extra base hit machine for the party and it was already a home run and a double on the season. And the scouting report would say that you're trying to go low and away to Jake Skull, but here, this one, looks like Bill Leroy's glove had a hole in it. It just goes right through. And honestly, I think that's a passed ball there on Bill Leroy. 100%. Fastball, Bill just didn't squeeze it. Thought he had it, he did not. So Cornette gets an extra 90 feet. Big 2-2 coming into Skull. Wow. Great pitch. 71 mile an hour curveball according to Trackman. It liked it, although it did say it just barely scraped the corner. Certainly not a gimme. Big payoff now. And Skull spoils it. It was the right placement by Noah Nisnik again going to the outside portion of the plate, but here you're just trying to go a little low, keep it in the zone, and wind up in the dirt to get the swing and the miss there from Skull, who's battling. We're about to see an eighth pitch in this at bat, the longest we've seen tonight. From the kid out of St. Louis, Missouri, to the man out of Woodstock, Georgia. Yeah, that gets him. Skull struck out looking for the second time tonight. He does have a bone to pick. Trackman thought that one was inside, but not by much. That is a guy with an incredibly good idea of the strike zone in Jake Skull. So you understand why he takes it, but I would put that in the too close to take department. Yeah, I completely agree. Another pitcher trying to battle off. An interesting so far between the bananas and the party animals. Already five strikeouts looking from batters tonight. We are seeing Sean Fluke and Noah Nisnik dot the corners of this strike zone. Yeah, that was the third for Nisnik out of his five punch outs on the evening. Nice cut on that foul ball from Noah Fisher, the extra hitter. Fans bumping in the stands to his walk up. Let me clear my throat. And he is fooled on that. Beautiful change up there. Two to fish. Just blocked by Leroy. Fisher, the Horizon League Player of the Year. And his final campaign this past spring across a five year career at Northern Kentucky University. I mean, he just exploded offensively. Put up video game numbers. Oh, nice catch on what looks like a dog or a burger. Cut and a miss. Change up does it. Six Ks through four scoreless frames for Niz Nasty. Noah Fisher goes chasing on that outside part of the plate. And Noah Niznik able to get yet another punch up. Punch out, you just see him fired up going into the Bananas dugout. And how about that? A nice hug from his coach, Adam Byron, too. Great four innings so far for Niz Nasty. I mean, he's up to 10 and two-third innings in his banana ball career just with the one run earned. Unbelievable. You get a look at the Skull strikeout from a side angle, though. So it really doesn't tell you anything about where the pitch was, except for that it was at the belt. Clearly, was between the knees and the letters. Skull's complaint was that he thought it was inside. And it was, but just by a hair. But we already covered that. Hey, baby time. How about that? Kenna out on the field with Jackson Olsen. Party animals and nanners alike. Moving it and grooving it. Sean Fluke's going to have to match another goose egg from Niznik. Get a look at Dalton Malden and our party animals correspondent, Drake Toll, getting in on the action. Guy's a quick learner. It's gonna be two, three, and four for the bananas here. Gabe Howell, Dan Oberst, and Michael Deeb. Good part of the lineup for him, naturally. Usually put your good hitters two through four. You would you would think so, but believe it or not, it's Gabe Howell still hitless against Sean Fluke to start his banana ball career. Well, it's one of those things, I mean, the bananas and party animals more than ever here in 2024 are filled with professional hitters. And it's just such a change of speeds. 
both figuratively and literally. When you're facing Sean Fluke, I mean, he's normally maxing out about 84, 85 with the fastball. His shoulder's not 100% tonight, so he's rarely hitting 80 with the heater. The curveball's in the mid-60s. The changeup's low 70s. The slider's low 70s as well. I mean, it's slow, slow, and slower. And the spin rates are all major league caliber. I mean, these, these breaking pitches are absolutely filthy. You saw D.R. Meadows. He knew the breaking ball was coming, still struck out swinging to end the third. Well, look, Sean Fluke knows that he's not successful based on that fastball. He loves his breaking pitches, and he loves messing with the timing of batters. And the fact that his pitches are well, slower than everyone else really helps him. These guys are so used to facing a lot of guys throwing the same speeds. Fluke just puts them really in, in quite the, the spin cycle. How about Taj Porter catching on an exercise ball behind the dish? Trackman liked that pitch, had the heater in the zone, although I get that in this weird situation, tough to call. How about Jason Swan between the legs, dives to first base. His second trick play of the tour. That ball had some English coming at him. And we've seen some real creativity from Jason Swan in the trick plays so far on the tour. Barehanded a ball for his very first trick play. Here, how about the between the legs reception there <laughs> and the layout at first base? Just for dramatic effect. Beautiful to see. Big bender misses from Fluke. And now behind 2 0. Struck out Dan looking on that curveball his first time. This one chopped towards third. Bloomer barehands across the diamond. Boy, is it great to see the boomer. Back in Banana Land, he made a tough play look awful easy. Looking just as comfortable at third base as he did last season. And Dan Oberst, not a slow guy at all. No. 40 stolen bases last year for the Bananas as a primary first baseman. Bloomer needed to barehand that ball to get the speedy Oberst, and that was just a phenomenal play. Now two quick outs for Sean Fluke in one minute and 30 seconds. Now he faces the former Notre Dame linebacker. Michael D, four years of football for the Fighting Irish before a couple years at Bethune-Cookman playing baseball and then was in the Chicago White Sox organization. We got a mix up here. Bryson Bloomer called it foul. Vincent Chapman called it fair. But Bloomer overrules the home plate um or uh, I'm sorry, Wheeler. Bryson Wheeler, the first base umpire, overrules the home plate umpire. Deeb's happy about it. He's still in, in this count here. It was a tough call, bouncing right, or, right over the bag or so. Great pitch by Fluke. Side corner with what looked like a changeup. And now with Deuces Wild. This one shanked towards left. Easy play for a charging Tanner Thomas. Fluke has retired five in a row. He holds serve. Still no runs and no points through four innings. And again, continuing to work quick. Two minutes and 33 seconds for Fluke. Special Bananas Foster celebration here. Shark, you've got it. Because of these celebrations, we have been 
players and fans here in the Netherlands to celebrate the couple with a dream and the family that started it all, the Paul family. To celebrate their story, please welcome Ruben and his foster, Julie Chabala. the Cole family. Jesse, Emily, and their biological son, Maverick, have been a licensed foster family since 2020. Shortly after getting their license, they welcomed Kenna, and a few months later, they welcomed Addison. For years, they worked their case plan to reunify these girls with biological family, but when that wasn't an option, adoption was the case. This family, one month ago today, welcomed Addison and Kenna into their family forever. Fans, please help us celebrate the Cole family for all that they do to make a difference in the foster care community and for their adoption in their family. How about that for a precious moment? Yellow top hats for the OG, Maverick Cole, and his brand new sisters, Kenna and Addie. This is one of the most special group hugs we've ever had here. Oh, uh, it's just, they're such a joy to be around, all three of the Cole children, and just so cool to just know that, that our owners are or just these exceptional people are, are really putting into practice what they have preached around here. And uh, I can't wait to spend so much more time with all the kids, spinning them in chairs in the hotel rooms. Right. Oh, my goodness. And uh, by the way, pretty cool moment for Matt getting the high five from Eric Jones Jr., who I have found out is one of his favorite banana ball players. Well, Matt's one of the biggest banana ball fans in all of the land. At home watching the games with Emily when they can't make it here in person and acting out a lot of the legendary walk ups, celebrations, hitting home runs with the guys. Was a huge Party Animals fan on last tour, flip flops. But it's just the best. We'll enjoy all the instances I get to pretend to be a dinosaur with those little rascals in the future. New man on the bump for the bananas. It's going to be Jared Donaldson in relief of Noah Nisnik, who goes four scoreless, strikes out six, only allows three hits, and two of them were bloopers. I mean, what else do you want from the guy? Noah, and he turns it over to the banana splitter specialist, who's been very good in his own right, and what's a really encouraging sign, 11 ground outs, eight fly outs this season, really shows Jared Donaldson splitters keeping that ball on the ground for him. With Tanner Thomas leading off out of the five hole, Donnie throws the ball back to Malachi Mitchell. There he is, Flash, playing center field, charging in, rips a back handspring into a cartwheel, and gets a strike. That is banana ball acrobatics at its best. Acrobatics galore from Malachi Mitchell. It's a 10 out of 10 pitch. Another look, perfect score for Flash. He runs back into center. Donnie back toeing the slab. And he misses with his first pitch of the night. Tanner had a flare single in the second. One of the three hits against Niz Nasty. That one just misses with the splitter for Donnie. Trackman had it right around the edge of the zone. Challenges him with a 90 mile an hour fastball and we've got two and two. Yeah, and the last time Tanner faced off against Jared Donaldson took him deep in Peoria, Arizona. And it's Tanner trying to get the better of the righty once again as you see quite the dance after fouling off that Jared Donaldson 2-2 pitch. <laughs> a lot of pageantry on the end of a foul ball, so we'll do it again. Check swing, did he go? 
No call anywhere. Bill rolls it down to first. I guess the call was verbal from Vincent Chapman. A good beginning to Donnie's night. Strikeout. Piggybacking off Nisnik's excellent outing. That is seven punch outs against the Party Animals hitters so far. Yeah, and we've seen kind of a different approach in terms of the pitching plan from the Bananas in these first two games here in Grayson Stadium. Letting Ryan Kellogg and Noah Nisnik, two lefties, both go four innings to start this ball game. And then bringing guys who are usually starting on the mound, Kyle Lewigs and Jared Donaldson, to handle these middle innings. They like the change of pace that they're getting. But it's Jace Acuff here on that second pitch against Jared Donaldson, dropping one into center field for, for his first hit here in Grayson Stadium this season. Yeah, you want to attack the fastball of Donaldson. Every heater he's thrown this inning, Trackman has had right at 90 miles an hour, which is not an easy pitch to hit by any means. But the splitter is what helped him rack up 121 strikeouts in 99 and a third innings in his Final campaign at Georgia Southwestern State. That was in the spring of 2022. Ended up being the Peach Belt Pitcher of the Year as well as the Southeast Region Pitcher of the Year. First team All-American. I mean, he, he racked up the accolades. Trophy case got a lot heavier after that fifth collegiate season. Bill not able to handle that one in the dirt. And Acuff will get to second on the wild pitch. And then Donnie, of course... A teammate of Bloomer in 2022 when they helped the Nanners repeat as Coastal Plain League champions. And it's going to be a ball for a sprint. Wild miss by Donaldson. Acuff's going to score easily. All seven fielders have to touch the ball before it's live. So Bloomer, who is still running about 80% in his first game back from surgery, is going to be able to get three bases on what is a wild pitch. And the tour leader in ribeyes, 56 of them across his 69 games played last year as his first stake of 2024. Yeah, and that's just great banana ball feel from Bryson Bloomer. Knowing that pitch got away, Bill LaRoy had to travel to go and retrieve that one. And just knowing that all seven fielders then had to touch the ball Bryson Bloomer was gunning for three bases all the way, and he puts the party animals in prime position to score multiple runs here in this inning. That, if they're able to have the banana score fewer runs in the bottom half, they'll claim the first point in this ball game. And this is the first run across by either side. Obviously, you need to score a run if you want to claim a point, which is the important metric in deciding wins and losses in banana ball. Now Taj Porter with a 3-0 count on him. This is a guy with an excellent eye. He's gonna try and shrink his strike zone, and it doesn't matter. I mean, that one was nowhere close from Donnie. So Porter easily drives in Bloomer. He's gonna slam the brakes at first as the Bananas have excellent sprint defense, get it to all seven fielders behind Donaldson very quickly. Taj with his second ribeye of the season. He'll be pinch run for by the Nanners, or the Animals, rather. Automatic runner, Jordan Hussein who also came to Banana Land this year injured. Broken fourth metacarpal during live ABs. Got one off the left hand. But that doesn't affect his running abilities. He runs like the wind. Now this is seven straight bad ones and Swanee swinging away. May have really helped out Donaldson who couldn't find the zone. What a play. Bill Leroy struggling to find that ball, but it's not picked by Olsen. His throw to second, not in time to get Hussein. And that'll be the first error on the tour for the Bananas backstop. Sloppy stuff from the Nanners here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, just a phenomenal play by Bill Leroy in foul territory there. But I think he got a little too aggressive trying to make the throw back to first base for the double play there. Probably a ball Leroy should have just decided to hold on to there and let Donaldson work here against Dustin Baber without letting that runner advance into scoring position. Yeah, Jackie not able to come up with the scoop. The ball goes ricocheting away. Heads up. Base running there by Hussein. Just barely beat the wrap. And now to the 10 hole we go. Baber fouls it right back into our kitchen. Startles our director of marketing, Kara Heater. <laughs> He's not happy that was shared with the world. Nice. 
Two one on Babes, who bounced out to, to Nisnik on the mound his first time. Another foul ball, count even at two and two. I, I gotta be honest, Josh, I'm a, a little perplexed. Jason Swan, a very smart baseball and banana ball player, that he was swinging after seven straight balls from Jared Donaldson. Yeah, it was definitely an interesting decision. Sometimes as a batter, you just like the pitch you get in the zone there. Here, this one is lifted out to center field, and Malachi Mitchell will haul that one in. Party Animal strand a runner in scoring position, but pick up two runs here in the top of the fifth. Let's check out some of our best trick plays from tonight's game. This is how Coxie took the lead over Dustin Baber. The key there, you got to get that keister on the ground before the ball is heading into the glove. Gabe Howell with his second of the tour. Noah Nisnik with his first. Bananas getting real tricky, and here are the numbers. Coxie up to 16, one more than Baber, and Acuff and Olsen. Right there waiting in the wings, in the hunt, as we like to say. Yeah, it's a pretty low trick play night for some of our leaders, and that's because we've seen most of the outs in this ball game have been of the fly ball variety or strikeouts. We've seen both Fluke and Nisnik racking up a lot of Ks, but it's Ryan Cox narrowly out in front in this trick play race. But you never know, here in the later stages of the game, you could see Baber, you could even see Aka starting to get those trick play totals up. And Bryson Bloomer's season debut is over. Great five innings, and Noah Fisher will slide from the extra hitter spot into the third base locale. I think Garrett Delano will most likely be sliding into the extra hitter position if the plan from before the game for Mike Vivasis holds true. How about that one? Danny Hosley waiting for that big bender. Sends it a mile high and a mile foul. 93 miles an hour off the bat, according to Trackman for Haas. It's five, six, seven here for the Nanners. And just one of those pitches where if Haas times it up a little better, might have been a leadoff home run in this inning. Here, Dustin Baber has some trouble with the handle and is still able to fire on the first and get the first out. That call from Bryson Wheeler and the fans not pleased with it. We might see the fan challenge here in the bottom of the fifth. Vincent Chapman heading towards the Riedel headsets. I didn't see the fan challenge used, but I'm just going to assume it was. So we will slap him on as well. Now it is up to Josh Tolevsky and myself to see if Bryson Wheeler's call was correct. We need evidence that clearly proves he was incorrect or else the call on the field will stand. We see the boot, here's the recovery. Now the question is if Swan was on the bag when he got the throw. It looked like he was not. That one's not gonna tell us anything. We need that I first I think we're gonna need to go back to that original angle. Here we go, and as slow as we can possibly go. All right. Boy, it's tough to tell. Bring it back again, please, and then we gotta make a decision. We can, Avery, we can, we've got you. Oh, all right, help. I think he I don't it. think I, the foot is on the bag. Gosh, I think, I think it was, Josh. I don't think it's overturnable, personally. I can't tell if that toe was off the bag. Now we're going past it. We've got to rule we, it inconclusive. I think it's inconclusive, personally. Oh, oh we're going, oh. <laughs> Okay, one last look. I, I can't overturn that. Inconclusive evidence, call stands. That's a heck of a job. Jason Swan, a multi-sport athlete, phenomenal football player in his youth and high school days and like a wide receiver dragging his feet trying to keep a pass in bounds there incredible that he was able at least to make it close enough that we could not overturn it and good job there by Bryson Wheeler on the call I mean we got to see it about seven times in slow-mo he had to make the call live that was a tough one
And the Bananas are just going to decide to line dance their troubles away with Eric Jones Jr. after that challenge. Naturally. What else would they do? Country music everywhere, according to the man born in Jacksonville, Florida. Really grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Moved up to the Tar Heel State as a toddler. Dolan Ponce enjoying this one. I do that move every now and then. I can't lie. I've seen you break it out. Classic dad move, you know? You, you tap that foot, you slap your knee a little bit. It's just a good time. EJ up to the dish. Banners need two runs to tie this inning. Or else the party animals will claim the first point available. Three runs from the Bananas would flip this thing completely on its head here in the fifth. They would get the first point of the night. EJ flew out deep to right his first time. Strokes that one down the left field line. Will take a big turn of first. He's digging for two. The throw, not in time. Relay from Acuff was on the money, but EJ hustling into scoring position with his third double of the tour to pace the team. Yeah, EJ turned on the Jets when he needed to, able to get in safely, and no, we've got another challenge in this inning. This one coming from the party animals dugout. Challenges on back-to-back -back plays. Avery and Vincent, we are ready for you whenever Bryson Wheeler, once again, the umpire at the center of this challenge. A look on this one, we're never gonna tell with that angle. Yes, we've got you, Vincent. I can't tell with that angle either. Unless we have it from the other side of the bag, we're not going to be able to overturn this call. Yeah, it, it, if we have it from the third base, okay, this is the shot that might tell us something. No, he's clearly safe. Call stands, calls confirmed, call stands. Bryson is the young goat, Vincent Chapman says. Wheeler vindicated on back-to-back -back plays. This guy's having a Hall of Fame performance tonight. And Vincent Chapman, we are not worthy. We are not <laughs> worthy. Stop questioning Bryson Wheeler's decisions. You're wasting your challenges. This is the machine we're talking about. Guy is unbelievable. He's behind the dish for a handful of our scrimmages in spring training this year. A tight zone, but an incredibly accurate one. I mean, he's just he's just an ace in the hole wherever you put him in the umpiring situation. So EJ keeps his double. And now Brandon Crosby, who popped out to first his first time with a 1-1 count. Some believe uh, Bryson might have a touch of AI somewhere within him, but if that is the case, I've, I've never seen quite a machine with such a beautiful southern accent in my life. <laughs> that guy is South Georgia through and through. Big Bender gets the bottom of the zone. I nailed the call, Biko. <laughs> By the way, that was actually Bryson. He joined us real quick. We got him on the mic. You wouldn't believe it, how, how fast we work. That one passed the dive of Jason Swan. Crosby into left, EJ getting the wave around from Gillum. He will score without a throw. Brandon with his second RBI of the tour, and now he is the inning tying run at first. And Jackson Olsen represents the inning winning run at the dish. Yeah, just a little bit of a late reaction at first base from Jason Swan, and Brandon Crosby able to cut this lead in half has just come up with the biggest hit in his banana's career so far. He goes for second, swing and a miss from Olsen, throws on the money, he's out! Now Chris Walker out there to make the call. First time Showtime's been caught in his young banana ball career. He's now two for three on the tour. Tosh Porter who gunned him out with a perfect throw. Don't sleep on that man, look at this one again. Right on the money, tag on the tush. And no challenge from the Bananas. Jackson Olsen down the right field line. This one's going to be good for extra bases. Boy, that caught stealing looms very large. Jackie into second with a stand-up double. It's his third two-bagger of the tour. He ties EJ atop the Bananas leaderboard. And now the inning tying run in scoring position. And Jackson Olsen's proven to be a more dangerous hitter as the game has gone on early on in this tour and has also batted very well with runners in scoring position, three for 10. Really tough that Brandon Crosby was caught stealing there. 
A guy with so much speed would have likely been able to score on that one down the line. Jackson Olsen, four hits on the tour, three doubles. He slugs. That ISO is not looking too bad. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> that just makes me so happy. Love to see the love for Bryson Wheeler in the YouTube chat. I mean, game recognizes game. Bryson's brigade. <laughs> Correct. That's what, that's what we call him. The Bryson Wheeler fan club. Bryson's brigade. Quick 2 count on Bill, who reached on a sprint his first time. Four straight bad ones. It was Bill's second four-pitch sprint in as many nights. I mean, put it in the zone. He's not swinging if it's not in the wheelhouse. Flips that one towards second, past the dive of Baber. What a piece of hitting. Wave around for Olsen, throw from Skoll, offline. Clutch RBI single from one of the co-captains of Banana Land, and the inning is knotted at two runs each. Bill LaRoy has been so good to start this 2024 World Tour. Here just pokes it out to the opposite field. You saw an aggressive wave from Tyler Gillum there and a great slide by Jackson Olsen, regardless of that throw being a little up the line to get in there and tie this inning for the Bananas. Now Ryan Cox who chops it foul. Here's where the Bananas flex one of the advantages that they have, it's depth, Noah Bridges pinch running at first for Leroy. So Bill is out of the game. Bridges is not the automatic runner. That's Malachi Mitchell. So this is a true pinch runner. Bill Leroy's night is done. And of course, there, go there goes Bridges. Cox spoils it. Change up Foldham. He's behind 0-2. Bounced into a 3-4-3 put out his first time. Hit the, hit the ball 95 miles an hour off of Jason Swan. By the way, Crosby's single that was past the dive of Swan. Trackman had at 96. Hot shots going to the corner opposite the one known for being hot. There goes Bridges, steals it easily. Tosh Porter made it a lot closer than I thought it could have been with another perfect throw. I mean, he's got a howitzer behind the dish. And Noah Bridges, first steal of the tour, he's baby sharking. Yeah, and he knows that he has the speed to flex there. And how about that? The celebration of Jake Skull and Reese Hampton. That's what Noah Bridges pulled out after getting that steal. Cox fouls that one off way out in head of a bender dipping down below the zone. Able to spoil it. Counts to one and two. Ryan Cox has never struck out in Grayson Stadium. And bounces this one up the middle. Baber flips it to, no! He tried to flip it to Acuff. It's gonna lose the inning for the party animals. The Nanners strike first. Bridges heaves his helmet towards the crowd. It is one nothing Bananas in the all important points department. An unreal rally from the Bananas and a really costly play there from Dustin Baber. Just trying to flip it to Acuff who was set up in better position to try and make a throw and get that third out but Acuff just not ready whatsoever, and Noah Bridges was full go running around those backs. Easy way from Tyler Gillum. Man out of Four Oaks, North Carolina, as fast as you're legally allowed to make a human being. Another look at it here, a rare Baber Booth on defense, and let's get it down to Drake Toll, our party animals correspondent. Uh, guys, the banana scoring a point is bad news. But good news, Bryson Bloomer is back after surgery just five months ago. Bryson's here with me right now and is actually going to do the surgery on me. Bryson? All right, first thing we want to do, we're going to make two holes in your right leg. That's my left leg. That's your left. All right. Bad idea. Right, another new hole. We're going to go one right here and one right here. Ah, you didn't put me under yet. That doesn't matter, okay? Just take the pain. And we're gonna go in with a camera, okay? Now's the big hole, you ready? We're gonna slice you open, and we're gonna go in here, and we're gonna repair your labrum, because it's messed up, because you just beat it up for a, a good while. All right, we sew that up, now we gotta file down your hip bone. You have a hip impingement, that's what I had. So we shave that down, the labrum's fixed, we shave that down, everything's gonna move properly. Sew you up, you got five hard months, of pain and suffering and hard work. I hope you're ready. Didn't even get put under Josh Biko.
Bryson Bloomer's first surgery? This is the first time you've done a surgery, right? Yes. My first surgery, I think it went well. And a trick play and a run scored. That's Bryson Bloomer. Back to you two. Bloomer, I'd feel very comfortable with that guy operating on me. I mean, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Look at the stare down. He's right into my soul there. I mean, Bloomer's an intelligent guy right there. He you is. know, that's, that's a guy I would trust with my life, I think. Yeah, that's a Lincoln Trail Community State. College and Murray State <laughs> education for you. I trust anyone who hits uh, batting practice and a pink thong from time to time. I've always said that. You know, my grandpa Larry always said that, too. Huh. Always has, yeah. I didn't know that was one of those old-timey expressions. Bring it back. Correct. Bring it back. Top of the order, Reese Hampton gets one up in his kitchen. Switch hitter gets to swing it from the left side for the first time tonight. Fouls away a splitter that ends up pretty much center cut. Cornette on deck, skull in the hole. Bananas lead by a point after winning the sixth inning three runs to two. Wild one there. Ryan Cox gets a single and a walk off on that last one, although he will not get an RBI. Bridges scores on an E4, second error of the tour for Baber. And Cox tied for the tour lead with his third walk off. And still has never struck out in Grayson Stadium in his illustrious banana ball career. Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable throughout his entire career. Now 40 games played in Grayson Stadium, 110 games all time, is yet to strike out. And how about this? Freshly inserted into the ball game. Dalton Malden, the songbird of our generation, getting a trick play. Excellent work from Mr. Malden between the legs over to EJ at first. Great to see a guy who's now in his third world tour, proud of Lake City, Florida. Holds the Grayson Stadium record for trick plays, five of them. That's also the Bananas single game trick play record. And the highlight of it lives on the Bananas YouTube page. I highly recommend anybody checking it out because there are five completely different trick plays. It's one of my proudest moments of anybody in a banana ball career. I mean, it's, it's truly a remarkable feat that he pulled off. And what people also might forget is that Dalton Malden recorded a walk-off in that same game as well. He was doing it all defensively and offensively. Was that the walk-off to win the ball game? Is this summer series? No. Okay. A lot of Dalton Malden walk-offs in my life. How about that? 3-2. Cornette leaves the strike zone but fouls it off so we'll get another payoff between him and Jared Donaldson who's in his second inning of relief that one lifted a mile high into shallow left Hosley jogging in falls into his glove a quick outs here for Donaldson who's retired four straight and now sets his sights on Jake Skoll, who is very happy to not see Noah Nisnik 60 feet and six inches away from him. 60 feet and six inches away from him. He struck out looking and swinging against his nasties. But unfortunately for Jake Skoll, batted below the Mendoza line against Jared Donaldson last season. And now how about this? Another defensive substitution for the Bananas in the sixth inning. The tallest man in banana ball, Dakota Stilts off Britain, coming out to man first base. Well, Stilts takes care of first. Awesome to see the love for Dalton Malden in the YouTube chat. Folks fired up for him. Now here is, here is one I don't understand. For the Bananas coaching staff and the Greater Banana Ball Rules Committee, Bill Leroy is still behind home plate after being pinch run for by Noah Bridges. Huh? We'll confer after the game. What? <laughs> How'd they pull that off? 3-1 to Skull, dangerous pitch. And he takes it above the zone. Just a smidge. And he turns on the Jets. Stilts out there on sprints defense. A stand up two base sprint for Skull. His fourth sprint of the tour. 
big one as he's in scoring position now with two down. Yeah, and despite a late ball four sprint call from Vincent Chapman, Jake Skull able to get into second base, mainly due to Dakota Stiltzall, Britton Manning first base. Just got a little bit of a slow jump going to the middle of the diamond for that seven-man transfer. And so Skull in scoring position here with the banana ball rookie, Noah Fisher, up at the plate. It's tough to get there quickly when you're motoring over on five-foot stilts. Fisher ahead 2-0. Very dangerous spot here for Donaldson. Noah was playing in the Frontier League and the Atlantic League last year. Two of the best professional independent baseball leagues in the country. In fact, I think everybody in the industry agrees that the Atlantic League is the best in the business. Now a 3-0 to him. Man, that's four straight bad ones from Donaldson. He gives the party animals a run here. Good job by Stilts, one of the seven fielders who all have to gather to touch the ball before it is live on a sprint in Banana Ball. And now trampoline on home plate. Garrett DeClue in the middle of it, back flipping as he's known to do. Dalton Ponce joins him on there. It's just good vibes, just trampoline fun. Feels like it's 3 a.m. and you just woke up and George Lopez is starting on your television. <laughs> oh, the glory days. Those were my glory days. Nick at night, baby. A lot of good shows there. Friends. Oh, yeah. Forget about that. Well, Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh. Come on now. Was Drake and Josh on Nick at night? I think it eventually ended up there, although originally, no, it was not. But also, I didn't have cable growing up, so I'm just shooting from the hip. How about Malcolm in the Middle? Yeah. It was there? I think so. That's a wild I believe you. <laughs> That's a wild pitch. Donaldson struggling with his control here tonight. Fisher gets to second. Our coordinating producer Chad Reese wondering if we've got uh, Chad, are you wondering about the Malcolm in the Middle theme song or the George Lopez show? Malcolm in the Middle? No, I, I Life well, is unfair. There it is. Uh, that's how the Malcolm in the Middle theme ends. Correct. Shout out Brian Cranston. Uh, George Lopez, it was Lowrider, correct? Yeah, I think so. Yep, yep. Jesse. Oh, my friend. Jesse, we need to watch George Lopez. Was that who it was a Breaking Bad okay. reference? <laughs> he brought Brian Cranston back into yeah. it. It was, it was good. We've got a really good battle here going on between Donnie and Tanner Thomas. Deuce is wild. Fisher off of second after the wild pitch and the sprint. In opposite order, the sprint happened first. And now the count full on Tanner. Got to look alive with Donaldson tonight in relief. You never know where that's coming. That one. Misses up, no! Wow! Ooh! Vincent Chapman calls it strike three. Certainly in the vicinity of the letters for Tanner Thomas, but I had it up. Yeah, a little bit of a gift it would appear from Vincent Chapman. Jared Donaldson's not going to complain though. No. Really kind of struggling with control tonight, so that called strike three just what he might have needed. So just one run for the animals. And let's get it down to Jesse Cole for the kiss off. Let's see what you guys got. Okay. All right, six months, here we go. And your name? Jason. Jason? Marissa. And how many years have you guys been married? 16. 16 years, a little better. What do you guys got? Oh, all right, he knows the hat move. All right, pretty good right there, pretty good. All right, and your name? Carol. Hugh. Carol and Hugh, how many years have you guys been married? 50. 50 years. All right, let's see what you guys got. Oh, jeez. Oh, they still got it. All right. I saw a lot of grabbing. Fans, is it our, you guys be the judge. It's our first couple, six moms. All right, a few cheers. Our next couple, 16 years. 
or Carol and Hugh, 50 years. All right, we have our winner and the kiss off. Great note by Katie Pooch in the chat. Frankie. Munoz? Munez? I just lost it. Frankie Muniz? There it is. That a boy, Biko. Star of Big Fat Liar and Agent Cody Banks. And Agent Cody Banks, too. Start the bottom of the sixth inning hot, kid. Frankie Munez, now a race car driver. Muniz is a race car driver. Anyhow, top of the order for the Bananas. Just nailed that one. Glad I got to that comment in the chat. Biko Scala with Josh Tolesky. Thanks for spending your Saturday night with us here in Banana Ball. Jake Lealios fresh in on the bump. A worm burner to third from Meadows. Cleaned up by Noah Fisher at third base for his second inning defensively. Started the game as the extra hitter. And DR one for three now on the night. Lealios boogieing on the bump. Yeah, I mean, what you're going to get out of Jake Lealios is a guy dancing it up on the pitcher's mound. But his first outing of 2024 was really solid. Three minute and 38 second inning and got a strikeout, a ground out, a fly out, everything he needed to do. And here comes one of the signature Lealios moves, a classic 3-2, 6-2-2. Naturally, of course, 3-2-2 for the Bananas, 6-2-2. Normally, the second pitch to the second batter in the sixth inning, and nobody moves their body better in Banana Land than Jake Lealios. I mean, that's a contentious thing to say. Gabe Howell decides not to try and steal first there. He did steal first last night. And we got it from our good friend Cowboy Kyle Lewis that he regretted that decision. Gabe Howell said that he just kind of blacked out, had no idea what he was doing, decided to take off and steal first base. And um, he might do it again, but he's a guy who, kind of like Michael Deep, just really values getting his at-bats every game. So, you know, I wouldn't expect more than two or three this season from Howell. Yes, I mean, this is a situation where he would really like to do it. I mean, first... One, sitting next to our banana ball statistical savant here, Howell tied for the tour lead with that one steal of first base. He could take sole control of it. More importantly, the bananas need one run to tie this sixth inning, and he gets aboard. He represents that run. The, th the reason why it didn't matter last night is they needed one run to win the inning. It was a wild pitch that already got DR Meadows up to second base. Gabe scampered to first. Good for his stats, not necessary for winning the inning. But Dan Oberst walked it off right after him, so I think it was hunky-dory. That one fouled off of him. That doesn't feel good. Do another 3-2. Lealios throws a ton of fastballs, a 12-6 curveball, a few cutters and a changeup from time to time. Native of Tucson, Arizona, in his second tour with the Animals. Out of Pomona College. Pitched in the Pecos League for the Tucson Saguaros before coming to Banana Land. He freezes Howell with the fastball there, two down. Yeah, it looks like a pitch Gabe Howell liked for the most part is how about the celebration from Jake Lealios. Howell just could not pull the trigger. Only Gabe's second strikeout across eight games. You get a quick look at his statistics there. They slide out of the way, and Dan Oberst has himself an infield single. Ball gets away from Jason Swan, good job by Dan staying put though. Swan rebounds off the small wall. And now the Bananas have the innings tying run aboard. Another look at the wild throw from Baber. He didn't have a chance in the world to get Oberst, who does run very well. We've touched on that tonight. Now the inning in the hands of Michael Deeb, who was excellent last night. Two for three, two singles. And a man with one walk off so far on this year's tour. Led the 22 tour in the 12 games, had five inning enders. And Michael Deeb also had a critical ball four sprint in the eighth inning against Drew Gillespie. Put him at second base as Dan Oberst steals second base on that pitch. And now with the count 3-0, and Michael Deeb, if he can just get one more bad one, would be able to drive in Dan Obers and not this inning at one run apiece. Dan is now 4-4 four for four in his stolen base attempts. Led the Bananas last year in steals outside of Malachi Mitchell, naturally. No one was close to him. And Dan leading the Bananas this year. That one just misses the inside corner. 
Excellent blinks from Deeb. It's going to tie the frame as Dan scampers home. Vitamin Deeb stays put at first base. In this inning, not at that one run apiece. And in the biggest of moments, Michael Deeb does not always try to swing out of his shoes. He more so just shows great plate discipline as Noah Bridges is back into this game, is gunning for second base, and he will be thrown out here. And it's kind of a perplexing move as Bridges is not tonight's designated runner. You know, I'm, I'm guessing he has to be. The Bananas did not declare it, but he has to be if he's out there. That's a good point. Correct. And that's why Bill Leroy is still catching, and Noah was right to be upset there. He looked to be safe on the replay. No challenge used by the Bananas. So the Bananas will dance it away. The inning ends tied at a run apiece, and the Bananas still lead this game by 1.6 innings in the books. And as we head to the seventh, and the Nanas do their stupendous boogie as only they can, it's time for Zappos to give away a pair of shoes. Our buzzword tonight, Loot Lake. That was a favorite from last night's chat. Click the link in the comment section. Fill in your relevant info, and then when it says buzzword, throw Loot Lake in there. Nice smoke going on as the Nanners tear up the grass beneath their feet. They are moving so furiously. Not many things make me happier in this great wide universe of ours than the Banana Nanas dancing under a full moon. They know how to move it. And speaking of the universe taking the hill for the Bananas here in the top of the seventh, it is going to be DJ the Invader, the holder of the fastest inning of all time in banana ball history, getting three outs in just, tw in just 57 seconds. And as the smoke clears, you get a look at the righty. DJ clouded in smoke. It's got to be tough to see the ball coming in through the cloud. I think that's what Mike Vivasis is heading towards home plate to chat with Vincent Chapman about. DJ throws the smoke bomb off the mound now. Folks loving the walkout song. Of course, the theme to Space Jam. A Michael Jordan classic. A Wayne Knight classic. Great reference there. Be six, seven, eight for the animals here in the top of the seventh inning. The bananas still lead this game by one in the all important points category. That one, wow, I'm surprised Acuff didn't take off. He wants to swing the lumber. Could have tried to steal first base, has not attempted that this tour. So far, one for two on the night. Drills that one deep to left and it's out of here! Oh, Chase Acuff! Are you kidding me? That's why he didn't try to steal first base. He leaves the building on the next pitch. Chase Acuff opts not to boost his on-base percentage, but the slog for the party animal shortstop, his first career banana ball home run, and it's against the invader. A huge shot. Wow. Trackman had it at 96 miles an hour off the bat. Traveled 347 feet. You get another look at it here. We lost track of it. Ends up bouncing up in those new left field seats. Well out of the reach of Danny Hosley. And here is Garrett Delano. So we suspected that he was going to be put into the extra hitter spot after Fisher moved from that position to third base take care of Bryson Bloomer, who gets a half night of action in his first game of the tour. Holy Chase Acuff. <laughs> that thing was crushed. 
And what's really interesting is last season, Chase Acuff had told me that he really enjoyed facing DJ the Invader and saw a lot of pitches out of his hand very well. And that, I think, factored into the decision not to steal first base there. And how about that? Leaves the yard, first career, banana ball bomb. I mean, this is a guy as Delano taps it foul. Count still, whoa, oh my gosh, it came back fair. How about the English on that one? It was foul. Got back into fair territory. <laughs> it's a ground out to third. Let's get another gander at it. What the ding? What kind of black magic was on that banana ball? Well, we know that DJ the Invader can control drones with his mind. Turns out he can control banana balls as well. Pretty sure DJ got that one back in fair territory and was able to get the out there on Delano, who was fuming. Now Taj Porter, who pops this one foul. Bill Leroy heading towards a scattering party animals dugout, and he'll grab it. Retires his counterpart. Second nice snag by Bill, who had to travel a whole lot, whole long way towards his dugout, and now towards the party animals dugout for two foul balls tonight. Now it'll be Jason Swan. One for two on the night. That was a Chase Acuff-like swing from Jason Swan on the first pitch out of DJ the Invader's hand. Comes up empty, now the count one and one. Really interesting story on Jason Swan. Met DJ the Invader when he was just eight years old. And how about this? Jason Swan, a second party animals blast to leave Grayson Stadium. Jason Swan takes flight. Unbelievable. His first banana ball home run. And it's two astronomical shots for the animals here in the seventh. An inning of first for the bad boys in black and pink. Oh. Chase Acuff and Jason Swan out to the races out of the box. We should have seen a bigger bat flip. He got a hold of that one and ripped it out of this ballpark. And look at Jake Lealius and the boys. Oh, I'm telling you what, <laughs> they're excited. Is that Richard Simmons? What a quick change for Lealius who was on the mound for the bottom of the sixth. Well, that was only a 21.66 degree launch angle from Swan. That's about as low of a launch angle as you can get a ball out. Trackman had it at 100 miles per hour, leaving his bat and traveling 359 and a half feet. I mean, that was a seed, a frozen rope right out of Grayson Stadium here. That thing was a bullet. Golly, what a bizarre banana ball in it. Two first home runs from Aka and Swan. And in the middle of it, one of the most bizarre foul balls turned back into a fair ball. I mean, Savannah is supposed to be the most haunted city in the country, I would say the ghost of Lenny Randell blew it fair, except he's still alive. And now Meadows will add a little flair to the fly out to center, so a two spot for the animals. And we get my all-time favorite race in Banana Land. Noah Bridges is hosting it, but we don't have a direct line to Sharks Audio tonight, so son of a gun, I think I'm just going to have to call the sheet race myself. When we do have a direct line to Shark, I'll be thrilled to hear what Bridges Brown. has to say. We got Tracy. But it's going to be me yellow. getting to call what is a new sheet race as far as colors. Yellow, brown, blue, and I'm going to call that a light green. We'll just settle on a straightaway green. And Noah is telling the people, this is very important. I am a sheet race stickler. You must keep all four limbs inside the race at all times or else you are disqualified. That's the whole point of the sheet race. And this one's a tight one out the gate. Blue's got a good early lead. 
Brown, yellow, and green, tight behind him. Oh! Brown takes a tumble. Now it's a three-sheet race. Bridges in pursuit as he calls it. This is neck and neck. Blue with a tight lead. Keeping green on his shoulder. Green trying to pull ahead. Oh, blue goes down. Green with an amazing victory. Yellow takes second. Blue tumbles into third. That was a barn burner. Here comes Brown. Can't forget about that guy. It's one of the greatest come from behind sheet race W's I've ever laid my eyes on. That is a lesson in never give up. Green didn't have the lead until there was about five feet left in this race. Tapped into the NOS and sped ahead for an amazing victory. The goat of sheet races. My neighbor here in Savannah, Ella, would be proud of that performance. Now Zach Blankenship takes over after Jake Lealios goes one inning of one run ball. And it'll be Danny Hosley who was at the dish when that inning ended. Noah Bridges thrown out trying to steal second by Porter who has cut down a pair of bananas tonight. Bridges and Crosby. And a 1-1 count on the Nanners left fielder who has flown out and grounded out this evening. Zach Blankenship, a guy who threw in Tampa, one of three party animals relievers where the starters were so great in Peoria. Blankenship, Garrett DeClue, and Ryan Rodriguez all did not get in in Phoenix as Hosley bounces that one up the middle. Tough to keep the pride of Vienna, Virginia off the bases for long. And just like that, Eric Jones Jr., former Seattle Mariners and Minnesota Twins minor leaguer, represents the innings tying run at the dish. Yet in Blankenship's first appearance, did allow a walk-off to the Bananas. Jackson Olsen with an inning-ending sacrifice fly for the boys in yellow. But Blankenship comes in in a favorable situation, up two runs in this inning. For him, though, he's got a tough task of just getting out a bunch of right-handed batters and Jones Jr. and Crosby, who's on deck. That one grazes the outside corner. Pitcher's pitch. Blankenship just like his left fielder, Tanner Thomas, out of Fleming Island, Florida. This one shanked deep and foul out of play. Zach with a fastball, high 80s, low 90s. We'll throw two seamer, really a sinker. It's a gnarly two seam that he's got. Curveball, mid to upper 70s, a change up around the same speed and then a splitter in the low 80s as Bridges works the sprint. Hosley is gonna stop at third, and how about the belly flop into second from EJ? Getting two bases on it. Remember, when ball four is fired in banana ball, all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch it before it's live. He turns on the burners, and it's very important he's in scoring position because he represents the innings tying run. You get another look. <laughs> He takes out the legs of Jake Skull on the belly flop. No, it wasn't an intentional slide or dive into second base necessarily, but EJ's really used the bit of speed he has to his advantage tonight. Of course, legging out a double in the fifth inning for the Bananas, and now getting this two-base sprint here in the seventh. Now Brandon Crosby, who spanked one into right field, 96 miles an hour off his bat for a base knock his last time. He's one for two, another... Excellent ball player that we have poached from the Pioneer League. Big spot here. Party Animals have the corners in, and Crosby finds the four hole again. Drives in Hosley. EJ will slam the brakes as Jake Skull fires. Just about a perfect throw home. Bodied by Taj Porter. And the Nanners cut the inning deficit in half. Tying run now 90 feet away, and the winning run with excellent speed on him, Crosby at first. And this is what the Bananas have done incredibly well tonight. Every time the party animals strike in an inning, the Bananas have a response. Party animals with two runs in the fifth, Bananas score three and get that first point. Party animals complete the run in the sixth, Bananas answer, tie the inning. And now party animals with two runs and the Bananas with a chance for two of their own as Fisher can't get that little looper off the bat of Jackson Olsen. And the inning once again tied tonight by Savannah. How about Jackson Olsen? Two for three. He drives in his sixth run of the season. 
tied for the team lead. And he moves Crosby up to second, who now represents the inning winning run. By the way, Crosby's hit was 95 off the bat, according to Trackman. So back to back, hits to the right side. He goes the opposite way, inside out, 96 and 95. And now Bill sends this one out of play. Still looking for our first foul ball caught by a fan in Savannah this year. We had two on last year's tour, of course. The roof on the grandstand hurts that prospect quite a bit. This one lifted towards Skull. Crosby pretending like he'll tag and not really pretending too much. Skull knew what, what was going on. Takes his time tossing it in. And that is a big first out for Blankenship. Yeah, much needed, and it comes against Bill Arroy, who has just pestered the party animals pitchers over these last three games. But it's really the task is not done as Ryan Cox, already with the walk-off tonight, has battled against these party animals' arms as well. And will just try and punch one through, possibly to left field, maybe to center, to try and get another walk-off and another point for the Bananas as well. From behind Crosby from Porter, he's back easily. Acuff says, my bad, I, I wasn't to the bag in time. Blankenship comes to Banana Land after pitching in the USPBL and the Frontier League in 2022 and 2023 respectively. Dustin Baber, uncharacteristic defensive miscue again from him tonight. That's an E4, his second error of the evening. He was thinking about flipping that to Acuff at second, possibly getting an inning-ending double play. Instead, the bag's juiced. The inning-winning run 90 feet away, and the hottest man in banana ball, D.R. Meadows, at the dish. Behind 0-1, nice bender for a strike. It's the perfect man you want up in this situation. D.R. Meadows says he's been laser-focused in these late innings in ball games. Here he lifts this one out to right. Jake Skull will come in and make the catch. And how about that perfect throw home? Brandon Crosby has no chance to advance there. Huge out from the party animals right fielder. This is a guy in Crosby that is a stolen base fiend. I mean, he was superb in the Pioneer League this past year. Swiped 29 bags. And it was a perfect strike from Skoll and Wright. Good call by him and his third base coach. His dancing third base coach at that, Maceo Harrison, not to go. So now it's up to Gabe Howell, another terror of the Pioneer League from last summer. Is behind two and one. 0 for three on the night. But two for four, batting in medium to high leverage situations in ball games. Now he chops this one. Chase Acuff charges and makes a phenomenal play and throw on the run to nail Gabe Howell. And this inning is once again knotted up. It's still a one point lead for the Bananas through seven. Another look at Acuff's big play to save the frame for the animals. Let's get it down to their correspondent, Drake Toll. All right, guys, not bad to hold right there, and especially good to have Jeff and Ty again, parents of Garrett DeClue. Guys, how excited are you to see Garrett pitch this weekend? We're really excited to get him to go. Uh, always just looking who they send into the dugout or to the bullpen to throw, but uh, we're just excited. Whether he goes or not, we're just excited to watch the party on with the win. Would you say you're most excited to see Garrett pitch? I don't know. I'm pretty excited to have Bloomer back. I mean, out for five months. We're that's going to bring a lot of momentum and energy. We're excited. Last night, it was was it Justin Baber, who's your favorite player. Tonight, it's Bryson Bloomer, who you're excited about. At Ty, at any point, will you be happy to see Garrett play? I would love to see him play, but we're just having so much fun. We love these guys. Jeff, we talked about it last night, but this is a whole lot different than regular baseball, which is all that Garrett has known, right? How, how crazy is it to see him as part of the uh, just the show that this is? Yeah. He, uh, he's an athlete. He competes hard. But this is his personality, getting to come out, get the fans into it. This is exactly who he is. He loves it. And, Ty, can you tell me a bit about Kevin? <laughs> love Kevin. He's our little adopted extra at our house. He's holding down the fort with the other boys while we're gone. From the DeClues to Kevin, shout out. Josh Biko, back to you. Thank you, Drake. Thank you, DeClues, for the second straight evening. If they're at a game this year, we're going to talk to them. It's just 
It's a rule of BTV. So you're telling me, you're telling me tonight that marks two Kevin shoutouts on the broadcast? Correct. Kevin get a lot of air time across these past two banana ball games. Reese Hampton, the leadoff hitter for the Animals this evening. Now leading off his fourth frame of the night, and he cranks that one off of Austin Krasminski down the right field line. He's digging for extra bases, and he will pull up at second with two of them. His tour leading fifth double after pacing last season in extra base hits. I mean, you can't, can't keep Reese Lightning off the bag all night long. He's one for four. Yeah, that's exactly right. Reese had 14 extra base hits in Grayson Stadium last season, and he'd honestly like to have more in 2024 with the uptick in, uptick in games as well. And early on, he's hit Austin Krasminski pretty well. Chris Monster, man out of Roswell, Georgia, making his third appearance of the tour. A 2017 Collegiate Banana. That was right before the Los Angeles Angels added the, him to their organization. Four years with the Angels ended up as high as AAA in Salt Lake City. And then in 2021 was in the Chicago Cubs org alongside his teammate now with the Bananas, Ryan Kellogg. And that'll be a strikeout of Cornette, who was one for four on the night. A sneaky one as Leroy throws behind Hampton. And a very rare thing for Dalton Cornette, his first strikeout of the season so far. Now Jake Skoll. Six years of affiliated experience for Krasminski, seven for Skoll. Bender gets the top of the zone. Count even had a ball and a strike. Jake a couple Ks and a ball for sprint. So far on his ledger tonight. Tries to check his swing, goes around on what Trackman had at a 92 mile an hour heater. Yeah, that was a great pitch from Austin Krasminski and an encouraging sign right now. A guy who is getting ahead of counts to these batters. We've seen him struggle with control from the hop out in front of Skull. One, two, now two, two. It's pretty encouraging. This one, great piece of hitting. Into left field, Hampton gets a stop sign from Vava as Hosley hits Howell, the cutoff man. And party goers at the corners with one away for their cleanup man, Noah Fisher. Just like Skoll, 0 for 2 on the night with the sprint. Although replace a run scored with one driven in. Slider misses low and away. And a 91 mile an hour fastball fouled off. Always have to be wary with Skull on first base as his teammates boogie in the dugout. Obviously, Jake Lealios, a big part of that. There goes Skull, throw down to second, in time, wow! Throw over to third, Hampton able to scamper back safely. Jake wants a challenge. The party animals have it. Will they use it? I didn't have the view that Chris Walker did. But from the booth, gosh, it was tight. I thought Skull got in there. Yeah, close call at second base there. I'm surprised Bill Leroy even offered a throw to second base there. But that could be a big second out here for Chris Minsky is now with two outs. This one is skied into center field. DR Meadows will come up with the catch, and Krasminski gets out of quite the jam with help from Bill Leroy behind the dish. As look at this football celebration from the Bananas outfield. Touchdown, Crosby. Another very talented 
football player in his youth. That's a heck of a job by Chris. Helped by Leroy, Skull caught stealing for the first time on the tour in his five tries. And the Bananas leading the game by a point will just need one run here in the bottom of the eighth inning to double that lead. Turn Grayson Stadium yellow, the 294th straight sold out Bananas crowd. Lighting up the sky here in the hostess city of the South. Bananas, winners of two straight, three out of the last four. But still trailing the party animals by one on this tour. Three wins, four losses to even this thing up. It's been a tight one all evening. And I know that's got to make our fearless leader, the man in the yellow tux, Jesse Cole, pretty special. What do you think, Jess? We love you so much, Banana Nation. Now let's go, Bananas! You assumed correctly. Dylan Porter will be the new man on the mound. And how about this, as you look at the numbers from Porter, DP, the man in his second world tour. All right, let's do it. With a mic on him. Yeah, what's up, guys? Oh, we are just thrilled that we've got you here to talk through what will be a tough test. It's going to be three, four, five. Ober, Steve, and Hosley. We got Ziggy here. <laughs> well, that is. I'm still, I'm still getting a little warm there. I'm in trouble with the mic, so I'm still getting warm out here. Well, I hear uh, you there. Let's go heater here. Nice that you get to face Ziggy instead of Oberst. Yeah, although nah. Ziegler, one for one with a double on the tour. He's got a 666 oh. OPS plus. All right. Yeah, I'll give him heaters to see what he does with them. There we go. I think that's a good game plan, Dylan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to make him hit it in play. Let's see. we go. We got a good battle going. Yeah, I'm just going to blow by him right here. I like Let's it. Go fastball again. I'm going to mess around my glove a little bit. Yeah. Make him think I'm doing something else. Stick with the heater. Oh. All right. Time right to here. challenge him. Yeah, definitely. What's well, better than one payoff pitch? Let's have another. Sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to him again. He knows it's coming, so let's see here. Oh, Ziggy, oh, deep shit. to left. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. It <laughs> is foul, okay. No, no, that. That's a ground rule no, double. It's a ground rule double, yeah. Ground rule double. I never even saw it lit. How about Alex Ziegler? Two for two on the tour with two booming doubles. I guess I should have mixed it up a little more. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy, it's been a few years since his collegiate career at California University of Pennsylvania. All right, Dave, I'm not going to go only heaters. But he but, can uh, still swing it. I'll what? start him off with one. Nice. They like to get off a second a lot, so. Yeah. Yeah, I might pick second here. Uh, oh, I like that. That's a good miss, Dylan. Yeah. I thought that had it, but. All right, we'll go in here. Oh man, that's there. That one did have it. Yeah. 
Yeah, Vince squeezes me. It's a, it's a common theme. <laughs> so, uh, especially late in games. Well, it looks like you're going to have to get one right down Broadway. Yeah, yeah. It's going to throw it down the middle. Wow. All right, well, yeah, that's. Oh, it's a strike call. What is going on? So is he out? I think miscommunication. No, Vincent is saying it's 3-1. <laughs> Vincent, you're going to have to be a little more emphatic about this. He's just holding up 3-1. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, a little confused. Deeb has to go back to home plate. Vincent's not really taking control of the situation here. What? Yeah, I mean, if it's a sprint, all right, all right. there's no way it would be first and third right now. No, but, no. This can't. I mean, what I'll is? I'll just keep pitching. Sure. What is happening? I mean, <laughs> but he's gonna give deep the steal of first. All right, I guess so. All because right. of a miscommunication. All right, that's well, tough. Let's keep rolling here. Oh, that got him right in the in the jewels. <laughs> oh no, Taj. Yeah, a little a wacky one so far. This has been a bizarre inning. Thankful that we have you on the mic to talk yeah, us through for, it. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. <laughs> Sorry about Custle. I didn't think Ziggy was going to take one deep over there. But you're not, uh, you're not his first victim of the year. That was Drew Gillespie. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Oh, one. I'm, I'm going to mix it up. Yeah. Let's go curve here. Oh, man. I, that's my first curve in like a year, so <laughs> <laughs> I've only been working slider. It reminded Danny you can throw it. Heater. Good. Ah. There goes Deeb, pump from Taj. So he'll steal first in a bizarre one and, yeah. and steal second. All right, 2-1. Yeah, just can't fall behind, guys. That's the name of the game. Can't fall behind him. So we're going to go back to Heater here. Chopper to Acuff, bare hands, throws home! There we go! Oh man, I think Taj is down though. He does have the ball in his glove, so Dan is out. Oh no, he's hurt. Now we have to check he's on hurt. Taj. Oh, that's scary. Francis Gilbert out to check on the Party Animals rookie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, bro, of course. I don't know, I mean, this inning is wacky. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, Dan just slid right into him. I think we're gonna need a new catcher, honestly. Ay, uh, yeah, this is this is a tough scene. Francis Gilbert out to check on Taj Porter. The two-hour timer is still ticking down here. I mean, if this thing hits zeros, this is a terrible way for this to be the final inning. Taj getting up under his own control. That's what you love to see. So it looks like he got, it was one of his legs. Looks like his left leg that, that got roughed up there. And now we need a ruling from the young professor on what to do because by the banana ball rules, the two hour timer just ran out. And this should be our last inning. The bananas are up by a point. It's something that's never happened. <laughs> yeah, we learn we learn as we go out here. So we're gonna <laughs> resume the inning at 40 seconds. So they, okay. after the fact, stop the clock. And this is bizarre here, Dylan, because you actually probably want to lose the inning if you can't. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't get. I'm a, I'm a ball. I have two balls. If you can't get two outs real quick here on Eric Jones Jr. I guess we'll try to turn two. So, what? Walk him? Okay, all right, I'm gonna walk him on four pitches. I'm just gonna walk him. Right, or a wild pitch could possibly get the job done. No, I'm just gonna walk him. I like it, yeah, there's one. Right? Yeah. Okay. Our timer on the broadcast at 55. Yeah, I'm walking him. This is banana ball at its best. 
the chess match. EJ swinging now. He takes the sprint. I, I don't know what's going on, but and that was weird. So Dylan, thank you so much for getting on the mic. It's going to be 2 nothing. Yeah, Bananas is, going to the ninth. I don't know. I'm just listening to my teammates. This is very bizarre, but. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah. All right, so he gets to go to the ninth. Sweet. <laughs> Dylan, that was the weirdest inning ever in Banana, Banana Land. Thank you so much, buddy. So now we go to the young professor. It's a very interesting situation because in this game, in the final inning, every run counts for a point. That means the party animals have a chance here to score some runs, tie the game, or win it. On the other hand, the Bananas need just three outs to win this game. Ladies and gentlemen of Grayson Stadium, make some noise and welcome to the final inning! Well, the young professor does not lie. The Bananas are up two points to nothing. The party animals will need two runs to tie the game and send it to the bottom of the ninth. Any more and they could win it in the ninth. And we have Zach Phillips in for the save on the mic, Philly. Can you hear me, Josh and Biko? We've got we you. Gotcha. Oh, Lord. So we'll let you talk us through the strategy here as you have Thomas Acuff and Delano do up. Thomas Acuff and Delano. Okay, this might be one of the fastest innings in banana ball history. I like that prediction. We're gonna go in right here on Tanner. Billy, what is your MPI prediction for this ninth inning? All right, let's say one, four, two. I like it. Five, six, seven. Right there. What's the one, one pitch? Uh, we'll go fastball again. Just missed up. You sticking with it? Yep. Of course. <laughs> okay, now three and one. I can take you places you ain't never been before. Maybe tickets. <laughs> this thing is not sticking in my ear. Well, worst case scenario, Philly, if the game is on the line, throw it away. You can keep talking. We'll just work around you. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you can pull that trigger at any time. Oh, we're good. We're going to talk the whole time here. All right, baby. There's no pressure in, in banana ball. Oh, one. we got my roommate up right here. One base sprint for Thomas, now Chase Aka. We're going to go quick here. Watch this. <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah. Y'all ready for a little change, please? Wow, what a wow. piece of hitting by Chase. That was really good. I don't know how you stayed on that. Thomas barreling four, around four, third. Four. No throw, so he will score. 2-1 ball game. And now your roommate represents the game's tying run on second base. And another big ninth inning knock for Chase Acuff as well. Wow. Four hits now in the ninth inning this tour. It is unbelievable. We really got to lock it in, fellas. That was good piece of hitting, though. Oh, good first offering. Oh, catch it, please. Back somebody, to back. Somebody. Back to somebody. Back. Fastballs. No catch there. That one was at 90, Philly. That was at 90? What's the move on 0-2? Let's see here. I think we're going to fastball up. we got to elevate it, though. That's good luck. That's the pitch you wanted. Now we're gonna go breaking ball. Oh yeah, me and Bill are on the same page. Squibber, you take care of it. Yep, we got one. We need a big strike out here. Who we got up? It's gonna be whoever comes in here for Taj Porter. It's gonna be the golden batter. Of course it's the golden batter. This is why we love banana ball. Please welcome Reese Hilton. So Reese, the switch hitter, will turn back around and hit righty. And this is what we love. A couple guys with four years of minor league baseball experience squaring off with the game on the line. 
This is good. This is great content right here. That's a fact. All right. Let's give them what we can. Oh, we got to stick that a little better. Just a little better. Right? Yeah. Great. Wow. Great curveball there. That is. That is what you call an airbender. Woo! Avatar. Let's see if we can get them. I think we're doing it again. Here in there. Oh, he smokes it. Damn. That's why he was the best hitter on the entire tour last year. He ties this game at two. Yeah, now we gotta hold him. That's a fact, Billy. Yeah, that's a strong AB. That was a 91 mile an hour heater from you. Trackman had it leaving the bat at 100. <laughs> that's what you call not a good pitch, man. You understand why the Tigers drafted him. Now Jason Swan. Way to jump ahead. Oh yeah, what we got there on that one? Another one at 90 from you. <laughs> Love it. We can live there. Oh yeah. You want to see something here? Check this out. Oh, <laughs> I love the hype. Small town boy. What's the two-one decision here, pitch-wise? We're gonna go. Little change up here. He's sitting yeah. fastball. Oh, miss up. That was a good pitch. That was a good one. Way to fill it up. That had to be middle, middle, and track man. It was. This is where boys become men right here, Vico. Oh, got it. That's a big second out, Philly. Got to do it yourself sometimes. Change up right there. Had him full. He didn't want to walk. So Reese up to second, and now it'll be Dustin Baber. Go ahead, runner in scoring position. Babe's 0 for 3 on the night. Couple flyouts and a ground out. Right. Okay. That's what you call a sword. That was gnarly. Yeah. You know what you do when you throw one like that? You go right back to it. Look at oh! that. Let's go. And now you go fast. And now. Woo -hoo. We like that. That's the right way to quit. You, did, Billy. you didn't foul it off, so don't yell at me. Everybody gets mad when I quick pitch him, but he didn't foul it off. So that's not on me. I mean, it's banana ball, boys. You got to be ready for it. I know. Watch this. You want to see something? Broadcast, check this out. Oh. That was another doozy from you. That's great. Great take. What should I go here? Y'all tell me. I think fastball. Sneak it by him. Okay. At the top of the zone. Well, Bill had other thoughts. Sounds good. Bill's thoughts were good. Wow, that almost came back. I know. That was close. Has he? Have we given out donuts yet? No donuts tonight. I wonder if the crowd wants donuts. Are y'all hungry for some donuts up there? I would love donuts. All right. That sounds great. All right. Here we go. Oh, he's saying that big lead. We can back kick him. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Just missed. Great pitch. How far off? Trackman had it off by about an inch and a half. Oh, Vince is good. <laughs> But he ain't good enough like that. <laughs> Get your free donuts, baby. Get your donuts. I gave up two, but we held them there. Let's walk it off in fashion. Thank you so much, Billy. Thank you, Billy. Not the outcome he wanted in the inning, but you always got to be happy when you bless over 5,000 fans with free donuts. And he did not. Let the party animals jump ahead with the go-ahead run in scoring position. Gets the big K of Baber, and now his team can win it with just one run. And not only is it a big third out for Zach Phillips that keeps this game knotted at two points apiece, but he would have had to face Reese Hampton yet again, who was going to bat in his natural position there. It's a massive out to not have to face last year's best hitter on the tour.
And now it's time for the Bananas to see if they can rally against Dylan Porter and see how they execute their golden batter in this inning. It's going to be 7-8-9 for the Nanners. The young professor kicking off a wave here in historic Grayson Stadium. Nice way to celebrate the second game played in the 99th year of Grayson's existence. The first was 1926. Everybody doing the mental math at home. So it will be Brandon Crosby, Jackson Olsen, Bill Leroy. And how about this? Robert Anthony Cruz will pinch hit here for Brandon Crosby, who is two for three on the night with back-to-back -back RBI singles at 95 and 96 off the bat, according to Trackman. He was having a heck of an evening. Yeah, but it looks like for the Bananas, it's just a left-on-right matchup that they're trying to utilize. They want to go for that advantage. As much as they like Brandon Crosby and as good as he's played, they're going to try and see if Rack can not only get his first career walk-off, possibly leave Grayson Stadium, but win the whole dang thing for the Bananas. Well, the man from Fontana, California, certainly has the pop to do it. Washington Nationals minor leaguer. In 2021, a rookie here in Banana Ball. He led spring training with three home runs across six games. With the grand finale being a two-homer performance in our final scrimmage. And he's ahead three balls and no strikes. Yeah, really great discipline by Rack. Still comfortable, just clapping on the bat there with the fans, awaiting this 3-0 pitch from Dylan Porter. And it's going to miss. So there's the ball for sprint. Rack on his horse, trying to get into second base here. And the party animals with perfect sprint defense are able to nail Rack at second base. Unreal. He was barreling in there. A powerful slide, but clearly the flip from Thomas to Skull in time. And Rack head first right into the tag. All seven party animals touch the ball just in time to nab the speedy Cruz. And now Jackson Olsen will try and kickstart a rally. Good take there on a nasty changeup from Porter. That thing moved a mile. Yeah, great blinks by Jackson Olsen holding up there. Now ahead in the count, two and one. And once again, Dylan Porter has fallen behind a bananas batter. If I'm Olsen here, it's got to be a perfect pitch for me to be swinging. You got to expect fastball, but that's what that's what Dylan has been struggling with control-wise. He tiles it up. Trackman had it at 90 right around the outside corner. Now a payoff pitch. Porter working quickly. And it's lifted deep out to left center, but Reese underneath it. And we'll grab it on the run for out number two. 90 mile an hour heater again. Left Olsen's bat at 93. And here comes the golden batter. Please welcome Dan Ober. Now the Bananas' best hitter from a tour ago. In fact, the Bananas' best hitter from the past two tours. Dan Oberst, in his sixth campaign as a Nanner, has the game in his hands. Dan Oberst, two for four against Dylan Porter here in 2024, and batted 4-12 against the Party Animals righty last season. Now chops this one. Porter has a hard time fielding it but recovers quickly and flips on to Jason Swan for the third out, and we will see our second showdowns of 2024. Well, the young professor fills everybody in here in Grayson Stadium, and we get another look at Porter's recovery on the bouncer back to him. Let's get it. 
to Drake Toll walking in with Reese Hampton. Reese showdowns right here. Talk me through it. How fired up are you to be tied? Well, I'm really trying not to throw up right now. As I probably run about six or seven miles tonight. Uh, I'm excited for the opportunity. And uh, you can hit it. I like turtles. He's going to hit it. That's Reese Hampton getting ready. Showdowns, guys. <laughs> Let's do it right here. The party animals have tied it. Maybe the craziest banana ball game of all time. Back to you in the booth. Thank you very much, Mr. Toll and Mr. Hampton. Zach Phillips back out on the bump. Ain't this something. And you still have the mic on you. Oh, yeah. Zach, the first time you faced Hampton, you started him off with a backdoor bender. I'm, I'm talking about showdowns in Peoria. Yep. What is the plan here tonight? Well, me and Bill talked it over. We're probably going to go curveball first pitch, change up, and then uh, just depends off of that. So, yeah. We're ready. We're ready. All right. This is this is so cool, by the way. Shout out to my family back home. Shout out everybody in Texarkana. Oh yeah. Here we go. Oh, that was a good pitch. That's a great pitch and a it. great take. I don't know how you laid that off. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. Change up. Ugh. Ugh. Woof. Yeah. Watch this. Haven't done this in a while. I like the subby. Oh, we might have to take off running here, boys. Best of luck if you do. Oh, my. I mean, this is what it comes down to, right? Three, two, showdowns. Everybody's on their feet. Let's do something cool here. What are you thinking? Oh, yeah. Wow! That's crazy, right? That's crazy! That's crazy, right? Are you not Come on! Come on! Let's go leave my glove out there. We're not going to need it again. We're about to walk this off. Thank you, Zach Phillips! Electric! Electric Zach Phillips! With the full count on Reese Hampton, somersaults to boot, and is able to get the showdown shut down. And now Drew Gillespie will see if he can best what looks like Dan Oberst, who will bat here for the bananas. He got him with an 83 mile an hour 3 2 changeup. He had gotten the first swing and a miss with a changeup pretty much right down the pipe and then ends up getting the huge showdown shutdown. And now he gives Dan Oberst with an opportunity for revenge against Drew Gillespie. In Peoria, first pitch, Gillespie jammed him, and Oberst hit it straight to Acuff, and this one bounced up the middle. Chase in pursuit, Dan around first. Gillespie out to be the cutoff man. Dan around second. He's coming around third. Acuff just got to the ball. Dan Oberst walks it off. The Bananas have won three straight and take this one three to two in showdowns. What a gritty W from the Savannah Bananas tonight. Not only do you get the energy from Zach Phillips after the biggest showdown shutdown of his career, Dan Oberst takes that pitch from Drew Gillespie, just lines it up the middle, and it continues to roll. And with the speed of Danny Barrels, you knew he was going to score. Bananas now with three consecutive Ws on the season, and this season series nodded at four and four through the first eight games. A lot of grit shown by this Savannah Bananas team.